I'm going to call the regular meeting of the Board of Aldermen to order on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, Tuesday, March 12, 2024, at 7.30 p.m. in the Aldermanic Chamber. The prayer will be offered by City Clerk Dan Healy, and Alderman Govea will lead us in the Pledge to the Flag. Almighty God, we have the high honor and the serious duty to manage the affairs of our beloved city. Fill us, O oh God, with a spirit of unity and understanding, which enables us to face our multiple problems with a serene mind with justice and charity for all, so that any and all decisions made by us will always be for the betterment and greater happiness of all our fellow citizens. So help us God, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance, please. Alderman O'Brien. Present. Alderman Timmons. Here. Alderman Moran. Here. Alderman Thibodeau. Here. Alderman Govea. Here. Alderman Lopez. Here. Alderman Sullivan. Here. Alderman Clements. Here. Alderman Senate. Here. Alderman Jetty. Here. Alderman Tebow. Here. Alderman Clee. Here. Alderman Dowd. Present. Alderman Kelly. Here. Alderman Wilshire. Here. 15 present, zero absent. Thank you. Also joining us this evening is Mayor Jim Donches and Corporation Counsel Steve Bolton. Mayor, did you wish to address the board this evening? Uh, yes, Madam President. Uh, I wanted to return to the subject which we discussed last week, which has to do with the ability of the city to undertake further borrowing over the next five years. Uh, as we discussed last week, uh, the city has many, many projects in the, in the waiting, in the queue. Uh, and uh, if you look at the list of those projects, you will see that they total anywhere, depending on the estimates, from 250 to 300 million dollars. Now, as we discussed last week, and the, the, the board approved a committee to look at these projects and to try to set priorities, uh, we met for the first meeting in which we uh, outlined the issues and CFO Griffin uh, spoke to us as to his thoughts regarding the city's ability to borrow additional funds. Now those, his thoughts and his, the Griffin plan, as I will call it, is set forth in the two spreadsheets that we put on your desk. Uh, these were presented to the committee, uh, the priorities committee, and are available to anybody who, you know, wants to ask. Uh, but what they, what uh, the Griffin plan suggests that at a maximum over the, over the next five fiscal years, at a maximum the city could borrow $30 million a year. 
And as you see from page one, the general fund geo bond plan of page one of the Griffin plan, for fiscal 25, we've already committed $28 million. Now that may come down a couple of million, but assuming the board uh, approves the 8.5 million uh, school project uh, money for uh, tonight, then we are partially committed for fiscal 26 as well. Now, the, um, the board last week approved the priorities committee, uh, but as I'm looking back to what happened, we didn't really adopt the Griffin plan. So it, it will be my, uh, I, I will be introducing next uh, meeting, uh, two weeks from tonight, a resolution that would formally adopt uh, the Griffin plan to say that we cannot borrow more than, th no matter what projects we undertake, we cannot borrow more than $30 million at a maximum over the next five years. And it, as you will see, even if we do that, we limit it to that, uh, the budget will, the bonded indebtedness budget, that is principal and interest, will still rise from the current level of approximately $21 million per year. Um, I think this is an important subject for us because we have so many operational needs, fire, police, schools, that uh, we need to make sure we, in my opinion, exert some uh, discipline and uh, set priorities, no matter what they might be, as to how to proceed uh, and in what order projects that uh, all of which have merit uh, to some extent or to a great extent. Uh, and Madam President, so I'll be doing that this next week and that is really the substance of my remarks for tonight. Um, thank you very much. Response to the remarks of the mayor. <coughs> Seeing none. <coughs> Recognition period. None. Reading minutes of previous meetings, there being no objection, I'll declare the minutes of the special and regular Board of Aldermen meetings of February 13th, February 20th, and February 27th, 2024 be accepted, placed <coughs> on file, and the reading suspended. Communications requiring only procedural actions and written reports from liaisons. Communication has been received from John L. Griffin, CFO, Treasurer, Tax Collector, regarding purchase 2024 Chrysler Electric Plug-in Van. Communication has been received from Tim Cummings, Director of Administrative Services, regarding communication relative to R-24-032, supporting issuance for the sale of the Elm Street Middle School property. Madam President. Alderman Clemens. I, I am objecting to the uh, memorandum from uh, Director Cummings on, by, on behalf of myself and several of the other members here and the, some members of the community because the guiding principles as outlined in the memo call for the demolition of the Keefe Auditorium and we object to this and we will seek to amend the corresponding legislation R2432 to neither seek nor accept any proposal for the Elm Street site that demolishes the Keefe Auditorium <coughs> and look forward to a robust discussion of the details of that at the committee. Thank you. Madam President. I join in Alderman Clemens' objection. Thank you. Duly noted. Madam President, I too join in with um, um, my colleague in Clemens. Okay. Uh, no. So they said it. Now I have to say it. <laughs> Same here. Likewise. Same. Okay. <laughs> Be an interesting conversation. Okay. There being no objection, I'll accept the communications and place them on file. You know, we just had an objection. Period for public comment relative to items expected to be acted upon this evening. Uh, we have uh, one, two, three, five people signed up. Paula Johnson. Uh, Madam President, may I ask one quick question? Can I speak about a communication since it's on the agenda? Nothing, no, we're not taking action on those. Okay, is that gonna be going to committee then? Yes. Okay. So even on the Chrysler's going to committee. I'm sorry, even more? The one regarding the vehicle from John Griffin. Is that going to committee? That you're taking action. That we're taking action on this evening. Okay, then I can speak about it. Thank you, good evening. My name is Paula Johnson. I still reside in Nashua, 15 Westbourne Drive. 
Um, I just want to talk about, I'll start with that. I'm really concerned because it says in the memo from um, Mr. Griffin that this vehicle is 12% higher than what it's supposed to be. Um, the original amount was supposed to be $43,610. That's what you allowed. And he's, you're asking for $5,216 more, which it makes it because that's an um, electric vehicle. I did do some homework, and I don't mind passing this around to the can board. I, can I interrupt you one second? Sure. You can't have signs in here. You need to park those out oh. in the hallway, please. They cannot be displayed in here. Thank you. I'm sorry, uh, Paula Johnson. You can continue. That's okay, as long as my time doesn't run out, you know. Um, this doesn't even have anything to do with us. We're city. Right. You know, let's get real here. We're not talking about ceasefiring here. Now, unless we're going to have something here in this board. Shh. I I do have a memo that I'd like to pass around that I sent to Mr. Griffin, and I sent it to two of the aldermen, if you don't mind, and it just shows you some other vehicles that you can get for less money um, versus this one for $48,000. I used to work in the auto industry, so I know how to do a little bit of this. The other thing I would like to talk about is the, um, the issue of R-24-005, the 85, $8.5 million bond being on the Board of Ed. We, that never came before my committee, finance and ops, didn't know anything about it. So I think it's really a shame that people knew about it in May, Alderman knew about it before the election. This all should have come clean, should have come out to the public, not now after the fact. And 0 24002, this is the increasing compensation for boards and commissions. You know, this is a conflict. This should really go to the voters. How do you vote yourselves an increase in your stipend? That does not happen. That's not right. And as we the people, we the people, we the voters, we are the citizens of this city, should make that determination. I worked just as hard as all of you when I was an, <coughs> excuse me, when I was an alderman One at large. Minute. I worked just as hard on the Board of Education with all my meetings. And I went to as many meetings as I could. There was no Zoom, there was nothing. And the mere fact that we're asking, you all are asking for more money, you shouldn't do it. That's enriching yourself. Let the voters decide on this. You should not decide whether or not you're entitled to a higher stipend. And people who've just come on the board hasn't even done anything yet. So what do they know how hard the work is going to be and what's going to take place? So I'm asking you, please do not vote on this. And I did say at the last meeting that if you are, vote so you're off the board or, or amend it to do small increments. Thank you. Gentlemen in the front row, take your sign out of the chamber now, please. That one, and any other ones. Don't display them. Or we'll have to ask you to leave. Next is Robert Sullivan. Good evening, Robert Sullivan, 12 Stony Brook Road. I'm here to talk about Ordinance 024 Zero, zero, 002. I had the opportunity to listen to the uh, meeting, what was it, the, uh, the meeting last week pertaining to the justification of this piece of legislation. <clears throat> um, those who spoke, everyone indicated that they, when Mr. they were. Mr. Sullivan, ran, excuse me, we're not taking action on that this evening? Well, why? Yes, we yeah. yeah, it's under new business resolutions. Oh, he mean, oh, does he mean no? This is ordinance. It's an ordinance, okay. You said, I believe you said resolution, but okay, it's I an mean, ordinance. Can I start over? You can. Thank you. Robert Sullivan, 12 Stony Brook Road. Um, I'm here, you know what I'm here for. Mm. People at, at the administrative and personnel committee, each one said, when I ran, I didn't run for the money. And yet they're asking for money, more money. Now, perhaps part of the, the other boards, some of them warrant an increase. But I don't think this, the Board of Aldermen warrant an almost doubling of the increase of their stipend. You have a choice. You can either be a politician 
are a citizen representative. And many people said, well, I took this RAND because I, it was my civic duty and I wanted to be a citizen representative. So why are you asking for more money then? Where's the justification for this, Alderman Jetty asked. What cities were used? What towns to compare to Nashua? Uh, what are they doing? And I believe, uh, I think it's Alderman Key? Clee. Clee indicated that was man uh, uh, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Vermont were picked. Alderman Jetty then said, well, what about Manchester, Concord, and Nashua, and Portsmouth? We're Nashua. We have to look at other areas. We are Nashua. We should do what's right for us. Well, that's interesting because this board in the recent past has cited Manchester as to how they do things. When, when Alderman Dow put in the legislation to limit how much time citizens can speak, the big item was Manchester limits the time that citizens can speak at public meetings. It's okay to use Manchester for that. When the big police commissioner, who's going to report to the, the police commissioners, who are they going to report to? One minute. Manchester has the police commissioners reporting to them. There was an, a town that was cited, Needham. The average per capita household income is 182,000 of Needham with one third the population. What gives there? There was a rebuttal to a citizen who asked, send it back to the, to the uh, people to vote. 30 seconds. The public doesn't know what we do regarding the amount of meetings we attend and the work we do. We do. How do you like that one? The citizen, you know more than the citizens? I don't think so. So send this back to the committee, put together a robust justification which is sorely lacking. And if you agree with the justification, then create a question to be placed on the ballot this November. Time. Go to the people you're accountable to and ask Time their permission up, to do this. The mayor's salaries Mr. in the Sullivan. past would never. Your time is up. I, I have a vocal cord issue, so I'd like a little more time. No, you're talking please just fine. Please put this on a roll call vote too, please. If someone would ask. And that, that three minute Enough. thing is a travesty to the citizens of this city. Shame on you. Beth Scare. Yes. Hi, Beth Scare, 111 East Hobart Street. <clears throat> I'm, I'm here to talk about the increase in compensation for the boards. <clears throat> I'm opposed to increasing the pay for the Board of Education um, while national schools are exp experiencing an increase in violence, increasing budget, a declining student population, declining test scores, difficulty hiring ret and retaining teachers and teaching staff. The Board should be compensated based on performance, not just for showing up at meetings. Um, and our Dr. Crisp, in my neighborhood, um, the elementary school is in the lowest performing 5% of all schools in the state receiving Title I funds, and that's the second year in a row. Those parents deserve better. And the Board of Education needs to do better. Um, and for any parents who are frustrated with what's going on in the Nashua schools, uh, please check out the New Hampshire Education Freedom Accounts, which can award families up to $5,000 for the education of each child. And pretty soon, the Sununu is going to be signing into law, increasing the income limits for EFAs up to $150,000 for dollars a year for a family of four. So there is there are options for families. Thanks. Laurie Ortolano.
Lori Ortolano, 41 Berkeley Street. I have my stopwatch set. Um, you know, what's already been echoed with the people on um, the compensation for boards and commissions, I don't support that. I watched the Personnel and Administrative Affairs Committee meeting. The justification was very weak. You know, you're going to add $60,000 to your budget to compensate board members, and the public does know how to vote on that. And you can educate them a little more and get them involved to come out and participate in that. So I think you should consider that. And you should consider before you raise your pay bringing back Zoom, which was an interest um, issue for the public um, two years ago. And you said you would consider and bring it back, and it's been two years. And that was $12,000. Why don't you consider that instead? Okay, so everything that's been said by the others regarding increased compensation, I, I'm not for. Um, and I'm really sorry for the gentleman that was had the gavel struck on him because I wish, Ms. Wilshire, you would strike the gavel on some of the people in this chamber. You're doing it to the wrong people. Um, regarding the $8.5 million that's going to be voted on tonight for the uh, faux pas with the school, we never got appropriate answers on that. And given what the mayor has just said regarding bonding and the fact that that $8.5 million counts all in for the upcoming year, I think you should consider some options to use existing money to, um, to deal with that. I, I think it's a good idea. You know, I, uh, Alderman Dowd owes us answers, and Alderman Wilshire, the gentleman who called out for an investigation, I think that should be done. You know, what is your process when the school administration contacts a chairman of two prominent boards and says, here's the issue in May or June, what is the process to get that information out to the board? And maybe you need to create a better communication chain with your school and internally such that critical money matters such as this are documented and sent to the public body. The public body yeah, had a right to know, and they were not told. This is a total mismanagement, and we never got Alderman Dowd on the seat to answer the questions that should have been answered. I put in a right to note to him on August 29th, asking if there was any additional bonding coming in. He blew it off for 12 days. I received a response from Donna Graham that looked very much like a crafted Attorney Bolton response, stating that there are no new future bonding projects scheduled. The wording wasn't what I asked. Next and final, with regard to the bonding limitations of you know under 30,000 for five years, I want you to think about the money or what's going to happen when we unwind the new market tax credit in um, December of 2027. I believe we have a $7.1 million loan, not our loan uh, for leverage, but the Muscoma loan that comes back and gets transferred that we're on the hook for. And I'd like to know how you put that into the spending equation. I, we never had a clear um, dialogue on what Time. unwinding meant, but I would like to know what that means in 2027. Thank you. Matthew <clears throat> Guthrow. Matthew Guthrow, 104 Fawn Lane. Mayor, Madam President, Alderman, I come to speak to you today about my concerns about Resolution 24005. I came before this chamber a few weeks ago with questions about how we found ourselves in this position, a budget shortfall of $4.5 million in ESSER funds that you in this horseshoe approved back in 2022. From the last budget hearing, we all heard that Dan Donovan, Chief Operating Officer of the Nashua School District, said that the chair of the JSBBC, Alderman Dodd, was aware of the shortfall since May or June of 2023. I'm concerned why he didn't share this information with you here in this chamber with his colleagues for over six months, especially considering that you had the opportunity to remedy this situation, not now, but last fall with surplus funds. But you were never made aware of this situation until December. Now, a $4. million shortfall of ESSER funds has turned into an $8.5 million taxpayer bailout. Now, I'm not against spending money where it's needed on our schools. But there's a difference between <laughs> fiscal responsibility and fiscal irresponsibility. I asked you, Madam President, to open an investigation as to why this information wasn't brought here before the Board of Aldermen sooner. How is that investigation coming along? Madam President, 
Alderman, the members of the public shouldn't be the only ones in this room asking for answers. We need more of you in this horseshoe to be concerned about these matters. The public deserves assurances that measures are being taken so that preventative, so that preventable situations like this won't happen again. Communications requiring final approval. Communication has been received from <coughs> Mayor Jim Donches regarding purchase of a 2023 Chrysler Pacifica. Alderman Thibodeau. Uh, make a motion to accept, place on file, <coughs> and approve the purchase of a 2023 Chrysler Pacifica electric plug-in van for use in the Recreation Department from Allen Mello Chrysler in the amount of $48,826. Funding will be through Department 177, Parks and Recreation Fund 81500, Vehicles slash Surf, Motion Carried. No, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> You've heard the motion. Is there, is there discussion on that motion? Alderman Lopez. I'd just like to point out for the public that we have a script that tells us what we're supposed to read, especially when it's long and detailed. <laughs> and the last part is motion carried slash failed. So I don't want anybody to think we walked into this planning to vote for it. Right. No further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Petitions? None. Nominations, appointments, and elections? Hunt Memorial Building Board of Trustees. Charles Matthews reappointment term to expire December 31st, 2028, 27 Pendleton Farms Lane, Amherst, New Hampshire 03031. There being no objection, I'll accept the, the um, appointments as by the mayor as read and refer them to the Personnel Administrative Affairs Committee. Reports of committees, there being no objection, I'll declare the report of the February 15th, 2024 Human Affairs Committee, accept it and place it on file. There being no objection, I'll declare the report of the February 21st, 2024 Finance Committee be accepted and placed on file. There being no objection, I will declare the report of the February 26th, 2024 Budget Review Committee be accepted and placed on file. Confirmation of Mayor's appointments. Nashua Arts Commission. There being no objection, I'll confirm the new appointments to the Nashua Arts Commission. Charles Emmons, 8 Strawberry Bank Road, Nashua, with a term to expire July 30th, 2026, and Paula Lockheed of 4 Westbrook Drive, Nashua, with a term to expire January 31st, 2027. Do we have Charles and Paula in the room tonight? Come forward, please, for the oath of office. <coughs> Come right up here. <coughs> Each of you please raise your right hand. Do you each solemnly swear that you will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all of the duties incumbent upon you as a member of the Nashua Arts Commission according to the best of your abilities and agreeably to the rules and regulations of the city charter and the constitution and laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help you God. Congratulations. Thank you. Zoning Board of Adjustment. There being no objection, I will confirm the new appointment to the Zoning Board of Adjustment, Andrew Sylvia, 6 Autumn Leaf Drive, Nashua, with a term to expire January 31st, 2027. Is Andrew here this evening? Andrew will be sworn in at a later date. Unfinished business resolutions. Second reading of R-24-002 relative to the supplemental appropriation of $547,326.33 of fiscal year 2024 unanticipated revenue into fund number 1001 capital improvements department 160 public works administration in engineering. Alderman O'Brien. Thank you Madam President. I would like to make the motion for final passage of R-24-002 by roll call pursuant to charter section 49. You've heard the motion. Is there discussion on that motion? 
Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yay. Alderman Timmons. Yes. Alderman Moran. Yes. Alderman Thibodeau. Yes. Alderman Govea. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Sullivan. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. <coughs> Alderman Senate. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Tebow. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. 15 yeas, zero nays. That motion carries and resolution 24-2 <coughs> is declared duly adopted. Third reading of R-24-005, authorizing the mayor and city treasurer to issue bonds not to exceed the amount of $8,500,000 to fund additional costs for the building renovation at the Birch Hill and Main Dunstable Elementary Schools. Alderman Dowd. Yes, I'd like to make a motion for final passage of R-24005 by roll call pursuant to Charter Section 49. I'd like to speak to it briefly. Alderman Dowd. Yes, the four and a half million portion of this uh, was originally going to be covered by ESSER funds, and we are currently under contract to two companies for this amount of money on a contract signed by the city. So we need to pass that. Otherwise, we have to stop working on the two schools, which would be catastrophic as far as the cost and everything else. Uh, the other elements that are on there are things that came up uh, in, in the uh, building of the buildings and uh, it was voted by the Joint Special School Building Committee and the Budget Committee 6 to 1 to do the entire project and that's where we stand at this point. And by the way, I did not know about this in the time frame that was mentioned by the public. Alderman Tebow. Thank you, Madam <coughs> President. Um, so being part of the Budget Committee, I've certainly made my statements known about how I felt about this whole thing. So I'm not going to rehash all the stuff I've already said. But, you know, one thing that was said in our budget meeting was, you know, there was a couple things said about blame, like, you know, let's not blame. That's in the past now. We've got to move forward. Um, but I think when we're dealing with city and we're dealing with taxpayers, I don't call it blame. I call it accountability. So we do have to have some accountability here. Um, in investigation, we know what happened. The, the money was sent to the Franklin School Street, Street School instead of where it was supposed to go. So that's what happened. Um, so I don't think we need that. But I think we do need to hold some people accountable. And, you know, and I, I'm hoping they have a, a school board meeting tonight because I do not see uh, Dan Donovan or uh, superintendent. But to me, I put that at the head. The superintendent has made mistakes on the redistricting. He's made mistakes on Mount Pleasant and the communications on that. And he's made mistakes on this. You're accountable. I'm sorry. You know, our schools should have someone that is better for our schools, for our children, for everything else that's involved in education in this city. Nashua should be number one. And, you know, you heard about it in the public comment uh, as far as, um, you know, Oh, let's go charter schools, let's go charter schools, let's go charter schools. You know why? Because we're not the best and we should be the best. And to be the best, we need someone at the head of the school systems leading. So I put accountability to the superintendent, and if I was the Board of Education, which we're not, so we can't do anything about it, I would look for someone else right now. I'm sorry, I would. Second, schools' roofs are leaking in these two schools. So even though I was against all spending the extra money, we have to do something. We can't let leave the kids, right? There's, there's, there's things we need to take care of in the city, our taxpayers and the kids. And so right now we got, we're almost pitting them against each other, right? Alderman Sullivan made you know, a good effort to try to get, well, let's only do six and a half million and we'll take two million from what's gonna be left over from the McCarthy School. Great idea, but with all how it works and the fact that we haven't even sold those bonds yet, it can't be put into that kind of box. So. If we push this and we do save, the, we rescind the two, two and a half million when we can, it's basically Alderman Sullivan's uh, amending of this bill. It's just being done completely different. But at the end, of the end of the day, the result is the same, right? We're taking that two and a half million, we're saving it, and then technically we're only paying six and a half million. So I think 
as much as I'm against it and as much as I am irate about what happened and about the transparency in our school administration, I, I think at the end of the day, what's right for the kids here is to get those roofs done, fi finish those schools, and move forward with that. I, I really do. And I, I think that's what's happening here. We can't, we can't not make sure the kids are safe in those schools. And that, at the end of the line, is what we're doing. If we have to cut money somewhere else the, later on to pay for that, then that's what we do. But right now, I think we need to go forward with this because Harvey or any other contractor is not going to go forward without being paid. So thank you. Alderman Sullivan. Thank you very much. Uh, not to rehash everything that's been said over the last month, <clears throat> I think it's, I, I, I want the record to reflect in budget. I tried for a $6.5 <coughs> million dollar amendment, couldn't get three votes on that, tried to drop it down to four and a half million to try to place, replace the F ESSER funds to keep the work that we have already committed to going, couldn't find three votes for that. I'm not going to waste this board's time and try to find another four votes where I couldn't even find three at the committee level. I'm not going to support this tonight because once we support it, it then goes away. There's no accountability, there's no nothing. If we say no to this, we are forced as a city to come up with a plan B, and that's what I think we should do. We should not put this back on the taxpayers, not their <coughs> fault. Thank you. Alderman Lopez. Uh, apparently I picked the exactly right week to go on a trip to Honduras. <laughs> so I haven't actually gotten to comment on this at all. Um, I was doing a service trip, sorry about that. Um, so I've been watching the comments made. Uh, I would like to thank my fellow aldermen because most of what I would have been <coughs> furious about at the time uh, was expressed uh, clearly and articulately. Um, I do empathize with uh, the current situation in terms of uh, Birch Hill and needing to finish the roof. Um, having attended my first joint special school committee, I'm aware that there's this incredibly complicated logistics of everybody is crowding onto this side of the building while they're trying to fix this side of the building. And we're doing all this new construction. If we don't fix the roof, then obviously everything we just did is likely going to be at risk or or damaged. So I see the necessity of this. But I also echo my fellow alderman's calls that this is the fault of the superintendent. Poor communication is, is largely at fault, is my understanding. There is definitely justification for making the decisions that were made uh, with regards to the way the ESSER funds were, were directed to be spent. But I think this is a situation where you need to take this body a little bit more seriously, be presenting in front of it and attending much more um, diligently to, to such. I don't think that the response that we've been getting from the school district itself m is equal to the amount that they're asking for or the magnitude of the mistake. And again, as was pointed out, this isn't the first time we've had a major boondoggle. And I don't think it's the only time we've had issues where the school board has done things that literally cost taxpayers money. And that is under the leadership of the superintendent. They did meet, to my colleague's question about whether they're meeting tonight, they are meeting tonight, and they met yesterday. And I would encourage my fellow aldermen to watch that four-hour meeting, because it's a lengthy presentation of all of the things the school district thinks it needs to do now to fix issues that it's ultimately created. Um, and some of them are pretty draconian. I would expect a lot of concern from parents, teachers, um, and people uh, involved in general. And I think that's something that we as a body need to be attending much more closely. Um, I understand what my fellow alderman has said about not rubber stamping this because we do need to hold them accountable. I just, I don't know that being, that this is exactly the time to do it, particularly when we have the budget coming up. I think we need to ask some serious questions about the Board of Ed, to the Board of Education and okay. regarding their leadership and their oversight of the superintendent. Um, I think we need to look at the school's proposed budget very, very closely. And ahead of doing that, I would say, Unfortunately, we'll all have to do a little bit of extra double duty and be following along the Board of Education issues. They meet and have lengthy meetings just like we do. We trust them to navigate all of these uh, different issues, but the last several meetings that I've watched, the Board of Education elected officials have said they're not getting information in advance. They're not feeling like they're being prepared in advance. And if that level of oversight isn't happening, then I think we probably are all going to be called to do a little more. Thank you. Alderman Gouveia. 
Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I, I agree with what my colleague from Ward 9 says, has said, and I cannot go ahead and support the current motion on the table. At the end of the day, we can't let this just sit on the taxpayers. We need to send this back, roll up the sleeves, and make the hard decisions we have to make to be able to fund this. And I, I thought the amendments that were made inside the budget committee were, were fair and could have gotten the job done, but at the end of the day, the votes weren't there. So I, I will not be supporting this tonight, but we need to get all this work done in the schools. I don't think there was one project that any of us said shouldn't happen. It's just how we fund it. Uh, I'm not fundamentally against any of the projects that were proposed to us throughout this whole thing. It's how we are funding this project, and I, I just, I, I can't get behind bonding this money at this time. Thank you. Alderman Clemens. Thank you. Um, I too was away during the budget uh, meeting when this was discussed. However, um, and I'm also not on the budget committee either, but had I been, I probably would have supported what Alderman Sullivan had uh, proposed that evening. <laughs> that being said, um, I agree with what Alderman Tebow said, which was, which is that we can fix this on the back end. So if we approve the bond, that doesn't mean that we have to sell the entire thing. And so therefore we can go and rescind portions of it. And the committee that I am on is the one that the mayor spoke about at the beginning of this meeting, which is the, the bonding uh, committee, ad hoc committee, that's looking at <coughs> the totality of what we can bond over the next 30, I'm sorry, 30 million over the next five years. And clearly it's seriously, it's serious enough that I don't think we're going to go out and if we, if we can find another way to not spend the entire eight and a half million, then we're going to do that. And I would suggest that my colleagues here who are on the budget committee uh, and who are interested in this look for ways with the administration to reduce this bond ultimately and to reduce the cost of this. Um, maybe it's through escrow money, maybe it's money that's left over at the end of the, the, um, the, the budget year with the schools. You know, they had a lot of vacancies this year maybe there's money there that can be that can be used it just because we passed this tonight at the full eight and a half million does not mean that we have to spend that eight and a half million so as far as I'm concerned this conversation doesn't have to be doesn't have to end tonight just because we authorize the money so I I'm going to vote for it however I do definitely agree um, with my colleagues and I think some of my colleagues in that we, we probably should try to find some alternatives um, in, after we do this tonight. Alderman Clay. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I agree with everything that has been, um, has been said from literally everybody here. Um, I'm not on the budget committee, but I was there, I listened, um, and, I, and I asked the superintendent um, to please send a um, letter um, to uh, Concord saying that this has happened with the ESSER funds, it was put into ESSER 2, wasn't qualified for ESSER 2, got put into ESSER 3, and therefore um, created this, at least the 4.5 million. Um, I asked them, you know, send, send them a letter, send them ex ex explaining to them um, that this happened if they're unused ESSER funds, which they probably won't be, but to ask that question. The comment I got from him was that, oh, I've been making phone calls. Well, to me, phone calls isn't enough. I want a letter that goes there, and I don't know if this body can compel him to, but I am asking out loud um, to the mayor and to anybody else that, that is listening is to, to ask him to demand that he do this, that he make this effort to say, hey, look, at, we have our hand up if there are any extra unused funds. Now, now, having said that, um, I want to say that I was under the assumption, and if I'm wrong, please, I hope someone will correct me, that this 8.5 is, uh, is not 
hopefully ever going to be sold um, in its entirety and that it was basically a good faith effort to the contractor to let them know that yes, we're, we are serious about this, we need this to be done and that we will make every effort. We will not let it slide. We will make every effort to find funds every way we can, whether it's to rescind um, a portion of the $10 million bond from the middle school, um, whether it is to use um, unspent monies or escrow or anything like that to reduce it. I mean, I'd love to see it go down to zero, but if we got it down to um, just the $4 million and not the 4.5 for the ESSER funds, I would be all, all the happier for it. But um, I do think that we on this board do need to keep reminding the superintendent we'd like to um, find <coughs> out what he is doing. We're doing this as a good faith so that the contractor will stay on schedule, and that is the only reason why I am supporting it. I was furious from the day that I saw this. Um, and while some people may think that, you know, I'm a rubber stamp and that I'm all for it, I haven't been. I have spoken out against it. I've, I've spoken out against the superintendent. Um, I had hoped he'd come up, and the only thing he said was, I've made phone calls, and that's not good enough for me, so thank you. Um. Oh, Obi. I mean, sorry, Alderman O'Brien. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> My colleagues, I wasn't really going to speak on this. I support the measure, and I'll tell you why. In my 35 years on the fire department, I didn't take a waste barrel basket and turn it into a conflagration. Okay. What some of the aldermen have expressed in this chamber is with merit, and I have the deepest respect, but that doesn't fix a leaky roof, does it? Okay, so what needs to be done, and the question before us is the leaky roof. Do you want kids going to school with umbrellas and galoshes? Do you want mold issues in the schools and the cost to repair that? in the future because we let the roof leak? Let's divide the question, okay? And the question that should be divided is, do we want to fix the leak? And then afterwards, if these other issues have merit, then let's fully explore them as a board. But it's not gonna fix a witch hunt or, a, you know, going after Frankenstein's castle is not going to fix the leaky roof. And we need to do that first. And that's all that I read into the question that is before us this evening. So I urge you to maybe step back a bit and just look. Do you want to fix the roof or you don't want to fix the roof? And take it as a divided question. And then later, if it's with merit, then let's go to another so, you know, issue in solving, how do we get to this particular <coughs> point? Divide the question. Thank you, Madam President. Alderman Moran. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I also wasn't going to speak on this, but I, I guess I will. Um, so, I, that child's still here, so I tone my language down. I think um, the school uh, district did a poor job in uh, managing the funds on this. I'm not quite sure how uh, they uh, create a budget and don't monitor it through a drought drawdown monthly. If I can do that, I know uh, when I would ran grant programs and other programs, you would budget uh, for what you're allocated to spend and you would draw down monthly and then you would uh, see the expenses occur and know when you're gonna come short or if you're making, um, maybe you're coming in line with your budget. That would be remarkable if that happened. Um, but uh, again, as my colleagues have said, uh, I'm not going to uh, support a uh, not pushing this through to have kids sit in a leaky uh, classroom. It's just it's not uh, fair to the kids for what adults fail to do uh, to provide them not just adequate education but an adequate facility to learn in. Uh, and I find that um, public schools in this city have uh, been undercared for for quite a long time. And if this is um, going to be an issue for, um, for the long term, we have the ad hoc committee that can uh, address uh, the full selling of the bond or the budget committee uh, uh, to address it going forward. But um, 
you know, my, one, my oldest child, you know, we heard here about send your kids to private school. I pulled my oldest child out of a private school and sent them to public school on an IEP because she wasn't able to read. She learned how to read at a public school within three months. Nashville has very good schools. Private, public, charter, every one of those schools are good. Every one learns differently. And just because these kids are in a public school and someone can come up here and say, don't uh, put a roof over their head, we shouldn't hold that against the child. We should be holding the adults accountable for financing it accountable. And it goes back to the school district. Um, I just don't see a place in time where I could support uh, not putting a roof over a child's head so they can learn. So, thank you. All the woman, Kelly. Uh, thank you. I just want to add to the discussion by talking about infrastructure. It's something that we as a city are continuing to look at and making sure that we're doing the infrastructure as it is needed and not a long-term push off. Um, we know that it always, it's never gonna cost less than it's going to cost right now. And we are in these schools, these schools need the roofs. It's never gonna cost less than right now. Um, so this is appropriate for us to make sure that the children in our city have a school without a re leaky roof. Um, but I also wanna echo the thoughts of looking for other ways for us to fund this and not sell the whole bond. Just because we're selling them, we're approving this now doesn't mean we need to spend all eight and a half million and there are other opportunities for us to uh, figure out that, um, that funding. And I, I personally will be looking for that in the budget committee. Alderman Thibault. Thank you, Madam President. Um, so, I mean, believe it or not, I know, I know there's people out there probably that, that think that you know, we come to these meetings, we just do whatever we want. We don't really spend the time to think about these things. And I certainly have, being on the budget committee, this one has been something in my head. I don't think me and Alderman Sullivan and probably Alderman Govea are as far off as we normally are on issues where we're on the opposite side, right? I think we're razor thin close on this one because we have a lot of the same thoughts on, on this. Um, but the contractor is not going to say I'm only going to take three and a half or four and a half million. I'll just wait. I know you guys will get to me later. They're in there now working now. So I'm all for finding other ways to do it. I'm all for looking later on in the budget and, and being sharper with the budget so we can try to recoup some of this money. I'm all for that, but the contractor's not. They're not going to sit there and wait. So, you know, and this is not a slight against Alderman Sullivan because I think he was doing the right thing to try to explore this. But I could also say, well, why don't we just, I'm going to amend it to three and a half, just do three and a half. And when it's not going to go through, it's not going to go through. And then I can say, because I don't get much street cred as Alderman Sullivan does on taxpayer uh, savings on money, but I can, maybe I can get some street cred to the crowd, right? Um, but I'm not going to do that because I know it's not going to pass. And I know that the contractor will not build on anything but the 8.5. That doesn't mean we're not going to, we can't, and I know it looks like uh, we do it and then it's gone, we forget about it, we never go back to it. Well, then that's on us. we got to go back to it. We can't just pay the money, put it aside, and then, uh, you know, forget about it and never go back to it. we got to make sure we rescind those uh, McCarthy School bonds, right? We need to look for other ways to recoup some of that, not look for ways to take some money and save it somewhere else and spend it somewhere else we got to say, okay, well, that's not going to be spent anywhere else. That's going to go through the money that we already spent, right? This project's already being done. It's not like it's, hey, we're going to do a school next year, and it has to get done now, right? It's already being worked on. So my question to, to anybody that's going to vote no on, on this is, how can we get the extra money to pay for it right now so the contractor has that guarantee that we're going to pay them right now? Like, we can say, let's look for another way. But in two months, it'll be too late for them to get done what they need to get done on the schools for the fall. So my question is just how? Like, I'm open to other alternative ways to get this done now, within the next month, because that's really the timeline. I mean, Alderman Dow can correct me on timeline. I don't know if it's a month. I don't know if it's two months. But we only have so much time to figure out a way to pay for this unless we bond this $8.5 million tonight. So, but I'm, like I said, I'm very open so other ways, if there is another way to do it right now and get it done. Thank you. Alderman Sullivan. I feel obligated because I was, <laughs> yes, thank you. How? That's why I made the resolution to make it four and a half. We have to come up with four and a half because we committed 
to the project for those ESSER funds. Four and a half of that eight and a half million are the ESSER funds. We need that. That's why I amended, that's why I said we should amend this to four and a half million to make good on the project, basically cutting it in half. I couldn't find three votes on a five person committee. I couldn't. You were there. Mm -hmm. The other four million dollars is an expansion of the project. So I understand that if we don't do this, when, you know, the leaky roof, I'm only doing this because of the leaky roof. I just want to make sure that we're crystal clear on this. Four and a half million is for the replacement of the ESSER funds that we already committed to. Four million dollars is in addition to the project that we already committed to doing. So what I'm saying is find the four million dollars. But if this is going to pass, then I'm going to tell you I'm going to be on it to make sure that we don't sell this eight and a half million dollar bond. I'm still voting no, but I just want it to be clear of how we got to eight and a half million again and what the equation is. That's it, thanks. Alderman Tebow. Thank you, Madam President. And I just want to clarify too that that wasn't meant to be an attack. It was just a, a meant to, to clarify. I still think it's gonna be hard to find in the, in the short time that we have to find that money. But I'm with you on the, we're both on the budget committee, so I'm with you on the going forward. When we get the budget ahead, you know, given to us, and we're looking through each of these departments, and outside of letting teachers go, I'm really gonna be looking at the education budget when it comes to us, right? Um, I think we're both hand in hand on, on that. So, I, like I said, I don't think we're that far off, really, but I just wanted to know, you know how to get the money in the short time. And again, Alderman Dow can clarify the timeline. If we got more months, well, maybe we do have the time to to find it, and I'd be more than happy to, to help look into that. I think we're $4 million. Alderman Dowd. So, <clears throat> basically, if we don't pass the bond tonight for the $4.5 million, we run out of money next month, and the contractors stop, <clears throat> and the city's already obligated to pay them, so, you know, then you'd be turning it over to legal. Um, but the other thing is that I have already mentioned in several meetings that we definitely have $2 million uh, from the McCarthy School, and we'll know by April, May what our final savings is, and it could be enough to cover this entire four and a half million. And, but we can't, until we get further along, it's, it would not be uh, prudent to think that something possibly couldn't happen in the construction of a school the size of the McCarthy School. But right now, everything looks great. So uh, there's a very good chance that we will cover most, if not all, of this four and a half million. And what that means is because the bond has not been sold, the $10 million bond has not been sold, we will just decommit whatever we're not spending, and that bond will be reduced, and we'll cover this one. Alderman Lopez. Can I ask a question to Alderman Dowd, um, to the chair, to the president? Sure. Um, if hypothetically the school, the Board of Education <laughs> had just been persuaded to move a district line and send more students to one school versus the other, uh, so that there were less students at McCarthy Middle School, would it be possible to save money and sort of solve for this fiscal issue by not completing part of the school? No. <clears throat> okay. The construction just is completely separate from the, all three schools will be able to hold at, at least 800 students max. And they have moved more to Penichuk, which has its own set of issues than, than McCarthy. But uh, the building is uh, the educational wings, three, all three educational wings are basically done. And the administration general wing, the A wing, where the, the gymnasium's done. The cafeteria is, is well along. The offices are all being worked on and there's some work outside. So, and then of course there's the landscaping and, and the other things that go along with it. But uh, we're in good shape. We're ahead of schedule and well into budget. And you know, uh, I think we'll be all set. But, but just to if we clarify. don't have this pass tonight, we stop work tomorrow. Just to clarify, we're in good shape and any construction 
uh, savings or money coming back wouldn't be because of that change? No. Okay. Yeah. So, and the other thing is the way bonds work, the $10 million bond from the McCarthy School, it hasn't been sold yet, so it's very easy to cut that amount because we just won't sell the bond. And we'll do that legislatively. Anywhere else where bonds are already in place, you can't sell a bond to do A and then move it over to do B. You just can't do that. It has to go through a process that I tried to have Mr. Griffin explain at the budget meeting. The budget process, the bonding is, is very complex, so I would suggest at some point that he come in and explain more about the bonding process because it's, it's quite complex. But uh, um, as far as the McCarthy School, we haven't sold a $10 million bond yet, so it's just a matter of not selling the, the bond for that amount of money. Motion before us is for final passage. Is there further discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Timmons. Yes. Alderman Moran. Yes. Alderman Thibodeau. <coughs> no. Alderman Govea. No. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Sullivan. No. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Senate. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. <coughs> Alderman Tebow. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. 12 yeas, 3 nays. That motion carries. And resolution 24-5 is declared duly adopted. Unfinished business ordinances. Second reading of O-24-001, authorizing a stop sign on the 12th Street at its intersection with Will Street. Alderman Lopez. I'd like to make a motion for a final passage of O-24-001. Motion is for final passage. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries and <coughs> ordinance 24-1 is declared duly adopted. Second reading of O-24-002, increasing the compensation for certain boards and commissions. Alderman Clay. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I motion for final <coughs> passage of O-24-002, and may I speak to it briefly? You may. Thank you. Um, the, there were a number of reasons uh, for coming forward for this, um, but after seeing that the, the number of boards had not been increased since 2024, and at that, I'm sorry, 2020, 24 years, I mean 2000, 24 years ago, um, and I looked at the dollar amount and the value and looked at the fact that the alderman then felt that the salary was worthy of $5,000. To look at that and then to bring it to today's dollars gives us what we have and the numbers that we have within the legislation. Um, that is the, one of the primary reasons for, for doing this. Um, we built in the um, uh, CPIU just to stop this kind of conversation and the angry and, and so on. Um, as far as the um, public and everybody else is concerned, it takes the politics out of it. It just makes it happen naturally. So um, that, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Further discussion, Alderman Tebow. Thank you, Madam President. I guess I got something to say about everything. Um, so 1863, uh, Mayor Joseph S. Baldwin, our first mayor, made $100. Maybe even 50, I don't even know. So at some point, these things, whether they're boards, mayors, people of the city, the salaries go up or the stipends go up, right? So should they go up? I don't know. I mean, do we go back to those times and only take $100 or the state reps and take only $100 in gas? Um, I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is to that. Um, you know, like everybody else, I like money. I'm going to admit it. You know, I got one salary at home, three kids, two kids in college, medical bills. We all have that, right? I'm not rich by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so could I use more money? Yeah, I'm going to say yes. But in all honesty, I can't support this. Um, 
I just don't feel it's my conscience to, to vote myself a raise. Now, I know it's not just myself. I know it's other boards, some boards that probably are worthy of a raise. And, and I'm not saying we're not worthy. I know the hours I put in. It's a second job. Um, I work 50 hours in my regular job, and I do a lot of this. And some of it's on the weekends. I've heard Alderman Sullivan said he pours over things all weekend. So I know he puts in the work. Um, so it's, it's not worth what we make, and it's probably not wor worth what this raise is, to be honest, if you really calculated it by the hour. But that doesn't mean I can support it. And I understand where the supporters of the bill and the uh, writers of the bill are coming from. I do understand the logic, and I do like the fact that in the future, it takes us completely out of it. I like that, because then people can't say that you know we're putting it forward to try to, you know, if we tried to put this through next year on an election year, and we all voted for it, how many of us would still be, be there? Probably not many, right? So I understand that they're going in this in a non-election city year, good idea. It's taking it out of our hands in the future, good idea. Some of those other smaller boards that have smaller compensation, good idea. But at the end of the day, it's my conscience that says, I can't do this. So I'm not gonna support it, um, but I also won't shame people for believing that it's the right thing to do for the city and for the future of the elected officials that are gonna sit in these seats when we're gone. Um, we're kind of helping them in, in, the, in the future. So uh, do what you want, vote your conscience, but I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna be able to support this. Alderman Jody. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to refer it uh, back to the Personnel and Administrative Affairs Committee, and I'd like to speak to that. Okay. Um, so, uh, I have, you know, when, when this came before the, the committee, uh, of which I am a member, uh, I ended up voting for it. Um, you know, but I had uh, I had some you know questions which uh, you know we didn't have uh, you know the answers to, um, and uh, you know I, I voted for it because I, I felt that the uh, uh, you know it is time to increase that that level of uh, of compensation. Um, you know I, I don't think that uh, you know. Increasing it to for for the alderman, nine thousand dollars. You know, no one's going to get rich on that, um, and it it's hard it's hardly uh, equitable compensation. I mean, if you're just looking at the amount of hours that we spend, uh, you know, we're we're not getting paid. Um, you know, certainly we're not getting paid for the amount of time that we spend. Uh, you know, but there. You know, there's an argument that that is made that uh, you know that you know this is you know we're not doing this for the money to begin with. We're doing it out of a sense of civic duty, and you know we, we think that um, you know that we can you know make a contribution to the city and uh, uh, and, and uh, you know and and when you know someone pointed out when we ran, we knew what the uh, or could have known if we had looked uh, what the compensation was, um, and you know, and, and you know, the idea of uh, our voting ourselves a raise, you know, I understand, you know, where, where people feel that that's not appropriate, but the truth is, you know, it, I mean, it is, uh, you know, we we set it's it's not a charter provision, you know, it's not something that the uh, that requires the, you know, the, the voters to, to to go on it. You know, if we if we did refer it to the voters, it would be a non-binding vote, uh, also. And um, you know, you look a, you look around other governments, you know, other cities, other states, other you know, the, the House of Representatives, the senators, they all vote for their own compensations. There's nothing wrong with our voting. For our compensations, but I'm sensitive to the fact that, that that we, you know, we are benefiting from that, and and I think, you know, uh, you know, a suggestion that this take place, that this go into effect um, after the next election, makes a lot of sense to me. Um, 
And I can't make a motion to make those changes. I mean, it's not just the aldermen, it's the school board, it's the uh, fire commissioners. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's amending, you know, several different provisions, you know, which, um, you know, if we're gonna get into doing any amendments, it really, I think, really ought to be done at the committee level and uh, probably you know, needs to be checked by, by legal, the legal department to make sure whatever we're doing is correct. Trying to do it here haphazardly, I don't think, I don't think is the right way to go. Um, uh, you know, I also think that uh, you know, this happened pretty quickly from the time it was introduced to tonight. You know, it's only been a few weeks. So this would give us more time to, to you know, look at it and uh, answer people's questions and you know, hopefully, you know, what we end up doing, we'll you know, be able to convince people that, it's, that it is the right thing. So for all of those reasons, that's why I'm making the motion to refer it back to the committee. Motion is to re-refer. Alderman Clemens? Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. With all due respect to the maker of the motion, I will not be supporting that. Um, I thought it, this, is a, this is a hard conversation to have to begin with, right? Um, when you're talking about essentially giving yourself, for all, for all the reasons that were, that were stated. But the bottom line is that a decision was made almost a quarter of a century ago, okay, to give the aldermen in the other boards $5,000, well, the aldermen, $5,000 um, as, as the compensation. From a purely economical, mathematical standpoint, that $5,000 back in the year 2000 today is worth 9000 It's actually worth more than that, but we, we reduced it to make it an even number, $9,000. That's all this, that's the first thing that this ordinance does. The second thing that this ordinance does is it takes this uncomfortable conversation and the politics out of it by tying that to the CPIU going forward. One, a decision was made in 2000 to essentially give this board $9,000 a year in compensation. Two, we are correcting 24 years of neglect of not having this hard conversation. And three, we are tying it into the future to not have to do that <coughs> ever again. I don't think we need to discuss this further. I think it's, we're either gonna vote for it or we're not gonna vote for it. Um, we talked about what, uh, what uh, the alderman referred to as far as the election, you know, putting it to the next election that was discussed at the committee. I don't think that there's more to add to that. For all of those reasons, I will not be supporting re-referring this to the committee. Alderman Lopez. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be particularly helpful to refer it back to committee either because we all were aware that this was moving forward. We all had the opportunity to sit in on the committee to do advanced research to reach out to the maker of the motion. Um, it was said before that this happened relatively quickly. I would surmise that for the originator of this uh, ordinance, this has not been quick. This has been a slow and agonizing experience of people dissecting their motivations, their moralities. Even tonight, we had a colleague de detail, in, in detail break down the moral and ethical and conscience issues while clarifying that it wasn't meant to shame. That's hard to go through when you're the one who actually made this motion. And this is the first person who's actually done it in 24 years. It was based on a mathematical calculation. The idea of adjusting this isn't to give us a raise. It's to adjust the compensation, the stipend, um, based on inflation. Um, and not just for the Board of Aldermen, for other boards as well, particularly the Board of Education, which was mentioned tonight that doesn't work hard enough, quote, I would argue that maybe if we were able to compensate people to the point where they were better able to access the Board of Education, we might have people who could have, over the past 24 years, afforded to run for Board of Education. Being able to exercise your civic duty and vote your conscience is a privilege you get after you've paid your rent <laughs> and after you've paid for your children's uh, expenses and needs. And that's something that 
we don't all have the same budget items for. Some of us have more expenses than others. Some of us have more income than others. So I think the only fair way to do this is to do exactly what is being proposed, to look at adjusting by inflation the amount of uh, compensation that was originally put forward. I think if members of this body particularly have ethical dilemmas with that, nobody told them they had to keep their money. They can donate it back to the city. Even the amount that we have now, um, you could donate it to causes that you believe in. I usually do. And you can exercise your personal privilege to the full extent of your ability. But if you're representing other people and you're making decisions for your colleagues, then you do owe it to yourselves, ethically, to consider their situations and the situations they might be in and the situations that people who are going to succeed you are going to be in. Because I know, particularly, I represent a, a ward with low e economic income generation averaged to the rest of the city. And I want to make sure that we have the best leadership moving forward. So I want to make sure that we are acknowledging that the best representative for Ward 4 in the future might be somebody who can't afford to get rid of their second job or, or has to make those kind of hard decisions. And I think making sure that we're adjusting the compensation to keep up with inflation that selectively, many people have complained about the inflation of the last couple of years and the greater expensive things, but we're not really going to acknowledge that compensation has to scale to that inflation. I think this was done fairly. I think that this conversation is not going to get easier uh, if we keep having it. Um, I think we just either do it or we don't. And if we aren't going to do it, then we need to be forthcoming about why and not necessarily claiming that we have a higher ethical standard or higher level of conscience than the person who presented it when what was presented in this legislation is basically mathematics. Altman Klee. Uh, thank you, um, Madam President. I want to address something that um, has been said and I think um, Alderman Lopez had touched on it and I don't believe it was said in this committee but it, it has been said <clears throat> in the past um, and that was, you know, uh, you should you should do this for for no money, um, and um, the and I know it was not said here in this com committee, so I apologize for having misworded that way. Um, but it, it has been said. It was also said um, that we um, don't need to um, get this increase and so on because if if you can't afford to run, don't get a second job, and. My comment to that is, so basically what you're putting out there is, unless you can afford to be an alderman and you can afford not to have that second job or that full-time job, you should not run for office. And what message does that say to the citizens who are going to run? So I hope that this board does not re refer to it, refer it um, back to committee. We had a very lengthy conversation in committee um, and I even referred to myself as beating a dead horse because I felt like I kept repeating myself over and over again. So I had promised that I would try to keep my comments brief here because I think it really was discussed over and over again. I respect all of my colleagues here, all of you. I respect anyone that supports it or doesn't support it. You are entitled, you have your contingency, ah, sorry, my mouth is going dry, contingency um, for, that you have to answer to, as do I. Um, I feel comfortable that I can explain this, whether they, they want to agree with me or not. That's something, the hit that I will have to take, um, and I understand that. But I cannot go out and say to people, if you can't afford to run, too bad, get a second job. So thank you. Alderman Dowd. Yeah, this came up when I was uh, suffering from that upper respiratory thing, which I hope nobody else gets, because it's bad. Um, do I think that, that the boards need some type of an increase? Yes. Do I think that we should increase ours to 9,000 right now? I'm really having a hard time with that. I don't think so, because that's, that is, too much, you know. Um, so, I mean, I may support going back to committee only because I wasn't there for the committee, and and I think, you know, maybe something can be tweaked. The other thing I'm not really comfortable with is is adjusting it to the CPI. 
Um, I, I understand the logic behind it, um, but, um, you know, I certainly don't do it for the pay, because I can tell you it costs more to be an alderman than you get paid. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. But how much we should increase it, to me that's probably still a subject for a discussion on my part. Uh, um, but, and I understand the logic behind the 9,000. Yeah, it makes sense from a, from a mathematical standpoint, but I think we have to look at it from, you know, as chair of budget, I have, you know, <laughs> competing heartburn. Um, so I think, you know, especially some of the other boards definitely need increase um, because they don't get paid enough to do what they do. Um, but I'm not comfortable with the 9,000. I'm not comfortable with the CPI and, and I'd like a chance to have more discussion on it. So I'm still torn. So we'll see where it goes. Alderman Clemens. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to move the question. <coughs> the motion is to move the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion before us is for final passage. Mm -hmm. no. It's no. amended. Re refer. Re refer. Re -refer. Re -refer. Oh, the motion is to re refer. My, my bad. All those in favor say aye. N <laughs> Opposed? Roll call. Nay. 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 That motion fails. Motion before us now is for final passage. All those in roll, favor roll, say roll call. Roll call. Roll call. <laughs> okay, would the clerk call the roll? Oh, sorry. We moved the question on to. We moved the question, yeah. To, to, to uh, re refer. Right. Right, and Correct. then that failed. And that failed. But then I can still speak on the original motion. Okay. Is that correct? <laughs> sorry. Um, I just, I know it probably beaten a dead horse, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm okay with uh, the 9,000. I'm okay tying it to CPI. Um, for me, I don't need the money um, at all. If anything, it's to put me in another tax bracket and I'll end up paying more. Um, but it's not about the one single alderman or how it impacts you individually, quite frankly. It's about the majority here, folks that put in time and effort who aren't in a uh, similar financial situation to myself or others and also other boards that are, uh, are also struggling. Also, the op flip side, I'm, I'm aware of at least one or two uh, other um, boards where this would take them off their benefits um, that they receive for um, Social Security, not sorry, um, SNAP uh, and housing and all these other things. Uh, for them, it might be also a bad thing because, you know, bumping it up a little bit uh, takes away a lot. Uh, so there's the two sides. It's not just about making money. It's also about you know, there are, get this, people, people in the city who uh, are elected officials are on food stamps, housing, uh, and various other social uh, uh, safety nets. I was on food stamps for a good chunk of my life uh, and various other things, and uh, thankfully I was able to not need them anymore. But um, there are people that still do this job despite the fact that uh, they can barely put food on their tables. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. The motion is for final passage, and a roll call has been requested. Would the clerk please call the roll? <coughs> Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Timmons. Yes. Alderman Moran. Yes. Alderman Thibodeau. No. Alderman Gobea. No. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Sullivan. No. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Senate. Yes. Alderman Jetty. No. Alderman Tebow. No. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. Ten yeas. Five nays. And that motion carries. Ordinance 24-2 is declared duly adopted. Second reading of O-24-004, 
establishing the School Street parking garage. Alderman Klee. Thank you, Madam President. I motion for, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong page. I apologize here. Um, the bottom one, okay, there you are, sorry. I motion for final passage of O-24-004. You've heard the motion, discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> that motion carries. And ordinance 24-4 is declared duly adopted. Second reading of O-24-006 regarding posting the budget on the city's website and providing a hard copy to the library. Alderman Gavea. Thank you, Madam President. I move to amend O-24-006 by including the following last sentence under section 5-134D. If unable to fulfill this 60-day requirement, the Chief Financial Officer's Office may request the Board of Aldermen's approval for a 15-day extension and would like to speak to that motion. Certainly. Thank you. So uh, the amended language that tacks on to the original was something that me and my colleague from Ward 3 came up with. We had it officially written by legal, but it didn't get to the board in time, so I had to uh, do it verbally here. But all this does is instate all the original amendment does. We'll make it so if they're unable to fulfill the 60-day uh, requirement that they request permission through the Board of Aldermen. So I ask for the, uh, the board's approval on the amendment, please. Mo Alderman Kelly. Uh, thank you. Through you to the maker of the motion. Just wondering where the 15 days came from. <laughs> that was just a number me and my colleague came up with. If I could follow up. Yeah. Alderman um, Kelly. Would you be open to just having it say um, requesting an extension? That way they can determine what it is. I see what you're saying, but I feel this just adds a level of, of accountability uh, to the CFO's office. And if we could get that there after the 15 days, I, I personally feel that a 60-day requirement in its own is plenty of time for this task to get done. So I, I really would not be in favor of that at this time. If Alderman, I could just Yeah, respond. Alderman McKelly. I understand your intent, and I understand that you know it is a good amount of time. I just know things happen, of course. Um, and I just want to make sure that you know everyone who works at the city has amount of time to comply, and we're not doing anything that is an undue hardship. Alderman Clee. Uh, thank you, Madam President. And um, Alderman Govea was was kind enough to um, uh, listen when I when I when I spoke, and it was because of the undue hardship. Um, that could cause. We wanted to give them the ability to come in and ask for 15 um, days. Nothing stops them from coming and asking for another 15 days. But the reason why I had I had put this to them was because I know at one point there was an issue with uploading the budget because there were some hyperlinks and so on that they wanted to be able to make for that. Um, at, after speaking with um, Alderman Gouveia, the, the bottom line is first we thought 30 days. Let's give them 30 days. But then that's 90 days and. And, and we're just kind of prolonging it. We all know that um, we wait to the last minute to get our homework done. So we just wanted to say to them, okay, we're giving you two more weeks to kind of get this, get this done. And if you can't get all the one with the bells and whistles, put up the PDF and let's have at it. And then you can work on the bells and whistles. So it just kind of holds their feet to the fire. And that's why in our discussion, we said, let's just go 15 days, not 30 days. And, and I think that gives them a fair enough time to, to do it. And I do think that there could be hardships, so. That's all. Alderman Lopez. Can I just ask Corporation Council what happens if they break the ordinance? Because I mean, does the mayor get a fine? Do we have to authorize his paying? <laughs> 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 Alderman Klee. If they don't comply, they're derelict in the requirements of the office. Okay. So faithfully, you know, to the best of your ability, agreeably to the rules and regulations, <laughs> yeah, they'd be in violation of that part of the oath. Alderman Dow. Yeah, obviously, as chair of budget, I fully support this. Uh, at what point in the budget process do you want this first posted? This would be final approval. Oh, final approval. Yeah, this is, this is <laughs> after final approval, 60 days after the final approval. No problem. And by the way, if, if they had a problem with a 15, Days, I'm sure that they would have a solid reason to come back to us and ask us, exactly. you know, software glitch or whatever. So I don't have a problem with that. 
Motion is to amend. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion <clears throat> carries. Alderman Govea. Thank you, Madam President. I move for final passage of O-24-006 as amended and would like to speak to my motion. Alderman Govea. So as a whole, this is a, a piece of housekeeping legislation here for the CFO's office that uh, that would have them put into basically a standard operating procedure that the budget would be posted on the city website no later than 60 days and a hard copy be delivered to the library. Uh, in committee, we had some conversation over the library and I did talk with them and this would be a reference material. It would not be something that could be checked out. I know that was a question that was arised and a very valid question. Uh, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. This is just something to put it in a standard operating procedure, uh, allows people to have access to the city budget. Alderman Thibault. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Um, so I guess I didn't understand this legislation, so I'm going to play stupid for a minute, and probably some people out there will go, well, you're not playing. Um, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, but my, my issue with this, so I called, well, I didn't call. I emailed uh, Director McCormick and she's like, yeah, we get the budget. I get it every year. You know, they have budgets back to when Nashua and Nashville were two separate towns. So I'm like, well, if they get the budget, why are we making legislation to walk over the thing that's already going there for one? Two, why isn't it posted on the web? I, th I thought that was just something they, they're supposed to do. So my question, and I don't think CFO Griffin is here, is why is it not posted? Like. Is this legislation going to make it any easier than the fact that he was supposed to already, or they were supposed to already get it up there? So it feels like to me that we're just putting this in place because things weren't done that were supposed to be done. So I guess I, you know the question is to CFO Griffin, and he's not here to answer the question, but it's like what was keeping it from being posted, and whatever was keeping it from being posted before, will that change with this, <coughs> with this legislation? Alderman Govea. Thank you, Madam President. So to take your first question first with the library, I called the library and the, the desk said they didn't have a copy of the budget. They get the annual reports, but they didn't have the fiscal year budget. And then to go to the online portion of it, uh, this kind of stems back to the FY23 budget, which if you do go online, you can't find the adopted version of. Uh, you can find our 24 FY adopted budget, but not the FY23. Uh, as to why, that would be something for the CFO's office. Alderman Sullivan. Thank you. And just to add on to that, the fiscal year 2024 adopted budget, according to the city website, didn't go up until December 8th of 2023, uh, full well, six months after we approved it. Alderman Tebow. Thank you, uh, Madam President. So I guess we're saying CFO Griffin is derelict, is that what it is, in, in doing this? I guess it wasn't an ordinance. ordinance yet. But well, it shouldn't it kind of be a requirement? I mean, I guess we're making it a requirement here. But I will say, though, I didn't lie. I have an email from Director McCormick that says she has all the budgets up to the current. So it, when somebody grabs a, an RSA for that and decides to uh, write to know it, I do have the email. It's ready to go. I can send it to anybody that wants it. But so I don't know about the library part. I just think it's weird that we're, we're putting that in ordinance. But I guess I, I hope that maybe I guess this compels them to put it online, I guess. I don't understand why it's not, or why it took so long. Agreed. Alderman Clay. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I, I liked what Alderman Gavea had to say about standing oper standard operating procedure, and it, and it keeps things clean. It keeps it, everybody on track. I think that's a good thing. Um, when I was in the, um, the hunt room, I did find a lot of old budgets, and I can't say that necessarily I found the 2023 budget or, or the 2024 budget, but um, there were a lot of budgets that were there, so I assume that um, Director McCormick does um, know what she was speaking of um, as such, but in any case, it's still good to have, in my opinion, to have it in writing. This is what we want, this is what we require, and I think it's, um, you know, it, it, it may sound like it's just paper, but it, it's not. I think it holds people's feet to the fire. And um, I, I do know that when I spoke to, um, um, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> Mr. Griffin, um, CFO Griffin, um, on, a, on a number of occasions, and it may have been 2023, I don't remember, it was 2023, 2024, um, the fact that it wasn't there was because they were trying to put it in with all the bells and whistles. And 
that's why I said the 15 days, give them the hardship, and if they can't get it done in that, just say put up the PDF, how hard can that be? So, and I don't mean it to sound that harsh, but that's my feeling. Alderman Lopez. Um, we just put a stop sign at 12th Street and Willow Street. You'd imagine that in approaching an intersection, someone might stop and look both ways, um, but you could be wrong. Um, and there's some elderly housing over there and a number of residential uh, people that would definitely attest otherwise. So sometimes doing ordinances doesn't just like mandate that something new happen. It might just call attention to the fact that there's something that should be done and it gives them uh, a deadline for doing it as opposed to it sort of can be done whenever and then only when it hasn't been done and we only notice several months later does it become an issue and by then it's contentious. So I think this kind of just applies guardrails and I think it's fine. Alderman Moran. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, Alderman um, Govea reached out to me uh, when he was talking about this, uh, submitting it, and I thought it was a wonderful idea. He gave me background on why it came up, and um, I think uh, having a copy readily available at the library and throwing it up on the website uh, as quick as possible is a good <coughs> idea. And uh, I think uh, to my colleague from Ward 8's uh, questions of why didn't they do it before, I can tell you if the, you know, in certain situations, you got a lot of work to do that are, you know, I had to follow these rules left, right here that are in front of me, and if there's not a rule, over on this side, that gets put on the I'll get to it list. And not to you know diminish that, but these guys have a lot of stuff to do in the city. And making it a rule now brings that from the I'll get to it to the I have to do it within 60 days or ask the Board of Aldermen for a 15 day extension. And I think it's a good idea uh, to get it up there as soon as we can. <clears throat> Alderman Clements? Thank, thank you, Madam President. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that the CFO is derelict in his duty. I, I also don't think that um, anything that here was done, you know, or in the past was done um, maliciously, nor do I think that this ordinance is, is being put out to be malicious either. Um, I think we noted a deficiency and came up with what we want to see as a policy happen. And though it might be a minor uh, thing, it, it's, it's, it's a good thing. And when Alderman Gouveia emailed me and asked me if I would co-sponsor this, it took me three minutes to get back to him. And most of that was so that I could type and then click the send button. <laughs> yes, no problem. <laughs> because it's just common sense. So I, I'm going to be supporting this. Alderman Dowd? Yeah, no excuse for Mr. Griffin, but you remember in 22 to 23, we changed the way that we formatted the budget. Yeah. And you'll certainly remember the like half point type that we had a problem with. Yeah. And then it got sort of corrected <coughs> for 24. So <coughs> that may have been the reason it wasn't put on, but I, you'd have to ask him to be sure. But it should also be on there now, the 23, as well as the 24. 23 is not. 23 I know it's not on. I said it should be. Oh. oh. <laughs> Alderman Gouveia. Thank you, Madam President. And to that point, it exactly is it, it should be there, and it's not. And to <coughs> the tech standpoint, to be compliant with this, it doesn't need to be the, the fancy clickable with links. If they're up against the deadline, to be compliant with the ordinance, they could photocopy what they give us and just put up a PDF and that would, mm -hmm. at least by how I read it, would yeah. be perfectly <coughs> fine while they figure out a, a fancier version. So yeah. I think it gives them enough wiggle room where they can have some very quick fixes while they try to get kind of a more flashy, user-friendly version out. Motion be Alderman Lopez. Quick thing, just for Alderman Clemens' sake, um, you're not officially a sponsor? I don't know if that was something you wanted to fix before we passed it. Yeah, um, if I can, yeah, I'll be added as a sp as a sponsor. And um, I, I, the only reason that I'm not is because when it came up, I was uh, out out of the country. Keen eyesight for once. <laughs> focused it all in this <laughs> not at the stop sign, but for now. The only one that caught. Yeah. Further discussion. Motion before us is for final passage as amended. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. That motion carries and ordinance 24-6 is declared duly adopted as amended. New business resolutions. First reading of R-24-022, 
authorizing the mayor to apply for and expend the community development block grant CDBG in home investment partnership program funds for fiscal year 2025. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Timmons, Alderman Moran, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Senate, Alderman Tebow, Alderman Clee, Alderman Dowd, Alderman Kelly. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Human Affairs Committee. First reading of R-24-023, authorizing Penichuk Corporation to renew and extend its line of credit with TD Bank N.A. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Timmons, Alderman Dowd, and myself. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Penichuk Water Special Committee. First reading of R-24-024, authorizing Penichuk Corporation and Penichuk East Utility Inc. to enter into a term loan with, with CoBank ACB. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Timmons, Alderman Dowd, and myself. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Penichuk Water Special Committee. First reading of R-24-025, authorizing the mayor and city treasurer to borrow an amount not to exceed $2,500,000 through the issuance of bonds and or a loan through the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services State Revolving Loan Fund for the Wastewater Treatment Plant Class A Biosolid and Maintenance Building Project. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Dowd. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Budget Review Committee and schedule a special Board of Aldermen public hearing on Monday, March 25th, 2024 at 7 p.m. in the Aldermanic Chamber. First reading of R-24-026, authorizing a second amendment to the site lease agreement with new single wireless PCS LLC, successor by merger to AT&T Wireless PCS LLC, regarding the communications tower located at 67 Amherst Street. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Finance Committee and the Board of Public Works. First reading of R-24-027, authorizing the expenditure of $100,000 from the Conservation Fund for long-term maintenance, repairs, and protection of natural and watershed resources. Additional sponsors, Alderman Timmons, Alderman Moran, Alderman Clee, Alderman Dowd, Alderman Kelly, and myself. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Budget Review Committee. First reading of R-24-028, authorizing release of a certain sewer and drainage easement. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Moran. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Committee on Infrastructure and the Planning Board. First reading of R-24-029, authorizing release of a certain drainage easement and acceptance of a revised drainage easement. Additional sponsors, Alderman Moran. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Committee on, Committee on Infrastructure and the Planning Board. First reading of R-24-030, relative to the acceptance of $86,015 from the State of New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services Exotic Species Program and to authorize the transfer of matching funds. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Moran, Alderman Clemens, oh, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Clay, <coughs> Alderman Kelly, and myself. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Human Affairs Committee. First reading of R-24-031, Approving the cost items of a sidebar agreements between the National Board of Police Commissioners and two National Police Department unions regarding outside details. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Moran, Alderman Gavea, Alderman Clemens, Alderman Senate, Alderman Tebow, Alderman Clee. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Budget Review Committee. First reading of R-24-032, supporting the issuance of a request for proposals relative to the sale of the Elm Street Middle School property. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Timmons, and myself. In its first reading, I'll sign that to the Planning and Economic Development Committee. New business ordinances. First reading of O-24-008, 
no parking on the north side of a section of Arlington Avenue. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Moran, Alderman Clay, Alderman Dowd. Uh, Alderman Thibodeau. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Committee on Infrastructure. First reading of 0-24-009, no parking on the east side of a section of Toll Street. Additional sponsors, Alderman Moran, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Thibodeau, Alderman Senate, Alderman Dowd. Given its first reading, I'll sign Assign that to the Committee on Infrastructure and the Planning Board. First reading of 0-24-010, no parking on the south side of a section of Lock Street. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Moran, Alderman Thibodeau, Alderman Senate, Alderman Dowd. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Committee on Infrastructure and the Planning Board. First reading of 0-24-011, no parking on the north side of a section of Lake Street. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Moran, Alderman Senate, Alderman Clee. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Committee on Infrastructure and the Planning Board. Period for general public comment. We have a number of people who have signed up this evening. Paula Johnson. <laughs> I was, I was ahead of most of you. Good evening. My name is Paula Johnson. I still reside here in Nashua and even after this long meeting tonight. First of all, I just want to say, and I think I, I missed it last year at this time, anybody who wished me condolences of the passing of my sister, I want to just say thank you. I think I did miss it. Uh, it's hard to believe it's a year already. Um, but I do appreciate all the condolences and I you know, we have to look at people differently. You know, politics is one thing, but when we, when there's a personal tragedy in the family, we look at everybody differently. But I do appreciate everybody from last year. Okay, now we can move on from that, you know, <laughs> all the sobby stuff. Um, I'm not really happy with the vote tonight to extend your stipends. I think it was wrong. I think the voters should have, or you should have um, amended it and to give part of it. I think um, we all do this not because it's a job. We do it because we want to give back to our community. I sat on this board, I've sat on the Board of Ed twice, and I've also been a state rep for 100 bucks a year. And when that was brought to our attention, again, like I said, Alderman Clement's mother asked me to run to be state rep. I was a Democrat at that point in time. I walked away from it. Um, I'll walk away from any party because I'm tired of the politics and not doing what's right for we the people anymore. But we didn't raise the, our stipend because it wasn't put before the voters. And I feel it's very self-serving when you vote yourself a stipend. I get what it has to be. I've done it. I've been out at all these meetings. I've spent a lot of time. My kids were young. We didn't have Zoom. Alderman Wilkshire and I sat next to each other in this chamber with the old way. I even sat next to Attorney Bolton in this chamber, okay? We put the time in. I didn't have a lot of money, but I did it because I did it for the city, and I did it for the love of the city, and I wanted to do what I felt was right to give back. I appreciate all of you, but I don't appreciate some of the votes tonight. I think $49,000 or $48,000 on that electric vehicle, we could have done less with a gas, a semi-hybrid that shuts off like my Nissan for less money. But again, you have to remember, this is a taxpayer's money, and we're all suffering. And my final thing is that I mentioned about the, um, and that's what I really seconds. wanted to speak about, and I don't have it, which I'll probably send it out to all of you. Oh on the income qualification for our seniors. You have the single married of both $54,000, and when married people make more money than single, it is not fair to us, who our spouses have to work so we can pay our taxes. So I hope you will correct that so single and married are different on income qualification. Thank you very much. Robert Sullivan. Robert Sullivan, Nashua. Well, it looks like I didn't do too good on Ordinance 0224 about the stipend. Um, <coughs> there was nothing wrong with re-referring that piece of legislation uh, back to the committee. I think it needed a lot of work. 
not saying that it's not warranted, but I don't think in the present form that it's, uh, that, it, that it should stand the way it is. I don't think the justification, and this isn't personal, the justification was put together. There's virtually no justification. There was no cities, towns, that were denoted in any justification to the citizens of this city what the surrounding areas are paying and what you were looking for. There was no justification on that. I looked, and Nashua pays more than most with the current stipend. Now, I'm not saying that you don't deserve a raise. I'm saying especially the lower boards and the lower paying boards and the other. And maybe you do a little. Now, back in when they, <coughs> excuse me, when you, the $5,000 increase was added, I remember that. When it came to your calculation, you should have used the $1,500 that the Board of Aldermen were making, not the $5,000. The $1,500, then the $5,000 was increased. It was $1,500, increased to five, And that was, I remember the grumblings on that. that there were some rumblings from the citizens. That was an anomaly, a huge increase. The 2020 number that should have been used in this analysis should have been the $1,500. One minute. And if you use the $1,500, you would have found that the rate should be about $3,000, which many communities, that's what they pay. So now you are looking for more than three times that stipend. Well. You had a chance to make it better. Good, better, best. Never let it rest until the good is better and the better is best. Good night. Stephen Scare. Stephen Scare, 111 East Hobart Street, Nashua. Good evening, President Wilshire and Alderman. Today is Detransition Awareness Day. Mayor Donchus refused my request to raise a flag on a city poll. I'm sad because these are the bravest young women and men I know. Detransitioners are people who tried to live as the opposite sex, and then they realize that our bodies, not our identities, are our authentic selves. Some publicly relive their trauma, by teaching boys and girls that they're wonderful as they are, they don't need puberty blockers, hormones, mastectomies to be their authentic selves. These views are shared by medical panels in France, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and England, and the World Health Organization, who concluded that these are harmful experimental treatments. Even as I was sitting here, England almost all but banned puberty blockers. Detransitioners are often, they receive death and rape threats and censorship. Last year, the Concord Holiday Inn was, can, was pressured into canceling a Chloe Cole event. Um, the, a group of activists uh, tried to strong arm a brew pub into canceling an evening with Katie Anderson, a detransitioner, a beautiful young woman who lives and works here in Nashua. I invite you to go to my Twitter page, sidewalk underscore Steve, and hear her story. You can also find it on my Facebook page. I'm happy to sit down with anyone who disagrees with me. I can also point detransitioners to legal and medical help. There are parent groups as well. The banner that detransitioner Laura Becker designed features a salamander an animal that can regenerate its tail. One Although detransitioners can't grow back lost body parts, the salamander symbolizes the regenerative hope that they'll f find meaning and joy in their lives. And that's my wish for detransitioners and anyone living with injury, injury and trauma. I also want to point out there's, the detransitioners need medical help and that there's no insurance codes to help them, to get recompensation. They're on their own. And one of my friends, Prisha Mosley, pointed out 
There, you can, you can, there's, a, there's a code, an insurance code for orcabites, but not for detransitioners. So thank you very much. Bradley Conway? Good evening, Mayor and Alderman. Thank you for having me again. Um, I'm Bradley Conway. I currently work here in Nashua, and I love this city. Uh, you I'm, need your name and address for the record, please. I'm from Manchester. Um, okay. So I currently work here in Nashua, and I love this city. I'm a proud member of a group called Southern New Hampshire for Palestine, and we're helping to bring ceasefire resolutions across the state with campaigns in Concord, Manchester, Dover, Portsmouth, and now Nashua. The ceasefire campaigns are all based on the same idea, that global politics affect our local community and that local communities acting together can affect global politics. The ceasefire campaigns, that have, they have the ultimate goal of pressuring our federal representative delegation to push for ceasefire at the federal level. I really hope our efforts here tonight will inspire the board to draft and pass a ceasefire resolution for the city of Nashua and for the betterment of humanity. Humans have this beautiful attribute where we can feel and pay, uh, share the pain of others. We're also burdened with the understanding that compassion is a choice. <coughs> Americans know so well that a single death is a tragedy, but a million deaths is a statistic. That is to say that the unfathomable suffering being orchestrated by our government and therefore by the people of Nashua is so overwhelming that we cannot possibly comprehend it and we are left with the conclusion that we must act. We come before you this evening with great urgency, asking that you give voice to this movement for ceasefire. We'd like to share our outrage that both President Biden and Nashua's federal representative delegation, led by Annie Custer, Jean Shaheen, and Maggie Hassan, have refused for five straight months to listen to the overwhelming majority of their constituents and call for a ceasefire. They have made the people of New Hampshire into purveyors of genocide, and we all feel sick we feel that we have a duty to pressure government at every level to negate the harmful impacts caused by our recklessly self-interested <laughs> leaders. Whether we like it or not, our federal government is currently normalizing and One helping minute. to facilitate a campaign of genocide against 2.2 million people living in Gaza. The only way Americans could accept that this unnatural catastrophe is inevitable is if we were convinced by the media and people in power that the indigenous Palestinian people are less human than their mostly white Israeli settler counterparts. Nashua is being force-fed this ideology by its federal leaders and the media, and giving the green light to dehumanization emboldens racism in Nashua, plain and simple. This is a municipal issue in seconds. so many way, ways. Um, <sighs> so we believe in this, that this board and this movement have the power to pressure our federal representatives into doing the right thing. Uh, we want the city uh, of Nashua to stand up um, for a ceasefire, and please don't beat around the bush. We have a lot of people here tonight who are not on public comment, and I just want to humbly request that folks let the others speak. Um, and thank you so much for your time. Follow us on Instagram at Southern New Hampshire for Palestine. Thank you. Samantha Chevelli. No, I will, I will ask for the next person. Thank you. Mujay Aldine Sultan. Give your name and address for the record, please. Yes, Ahmad Sultan. Um, his friend, I just, if, if it's okay, I'll take his place. He had to leave because his kid is, uh, um, this meeting took so long, if it's okay. My name is Islam Al-Sarabi. I'm in- uh, Madam President, I object. Okay. 53 Georgetown Drive, Nashua, New Hampshire. Madam Asia. President, I would like, uh, this person did not sign up, like the rest of the folks that were here on time. Um, I would ask that we enforce our ordinance and let the next speaker, speaker sign up, and if there's time at the end to allow other speakers. But I think it may be prudent for the folks that have signed up. One quick minute, I'm not gonna take much Okay, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna go with Alderman Moran. We're gonna ask the people who signed up to speak, and if you have to speak at the end, we'll let you do that. Okay, thank Okay? You. <clears throat> so, Russia. Good evening, Mrs. President, Aldermen, Alderwomen. My name is Rasha Mahmood. I live at 169A West Hollis Street in Nashua. Um, we are a mixed young family. We have a three-year-old who loves fire trucks and we moved here from Derry, New Hampshire. We came here because it's a young, fresh city. 
with a diverse population and it seems to embrace a bright and inclusive future. It's a gateway city, like my hometown of Newburgh, New York, which is uh, where I grew up and it's one hour of New York City. It has uh, locals, immigrant neighborhoods, black and brown small businesses, many churches, a few Jewish temples, and a small charming mosque like we have on Pine Street. It's a place where young families like mine can belong. Newburgh, New York recently passed a ceasefire resolution also, and Nashua can too. Two million innocent civilians in Gaza are not only dying, also starving, unable to find clean water, wasting away from preventable diseases. Cities like ours must remain inclusive, diverse, and demonstrate our values to the world. A ceasefire shows value for people that are different, like my family, including black and brown lives, Muslims, Christians, and Jews. It would be a chance, a ceasefire would be a chance to feed one million hungry children, save lives, rebuild homes instead of tents, children could return to school, rebuild young families, establish small businesses, and a chance to release hostages as well, a chance for peace. Further, if we really want a peace, one if we minute. really want peaceful neighborhoods and world, we would also stop funding Israel's military with American taxpayer dollars. Currently, there is a proposal for $16 billion for Israel in, the, in Congress. If that was shared evenly among states, that would mean $320 million for the Granite State. And we could invest in schools, affordable homes, roads, health care, child care, and some of the budget items that you've proposed this evening. That's why I'm humbly asking the aldermen of the Gate City of Nashua to draft, adopt, and support a ceasefire resolution as soon as possible to save lives in the Holy Land um, and also improve Nashua and Granite State families' quality of life. Thank you. No, that, that's not appropriate at this time. Thank you. Melissa Ewell. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's kind of caught off guard, but um, I'm Melissa Ewell. Uh, I live at Nine Bartimus Trail here in Nashua. Um, like Rasha, I have a mixed family. Um, we are new to Nashua, also from Derry. Um, and my husband, my husband recently immigrated here from Palestine, um, so I know firsthand and been following what's going on there. Um, I'm here today to ask for a ceasefire. Uh, what I see um, and what all of us have seen um, is heartbreaking. Um, it's not about religion or politics, it's about humanity and lives. Children and women are dying. Uh, people of all faiths are losing their lives. Um, so um, I hope we could consider this um, in order to um, save the beautiful land of Palestine. Thank you. Beth Scare. Beth Scare, 111 East Hobart Street. I'm here also about D-Trans Awareness Day. Um, this is a story of a young man who lives pretty close to Nashua, and I it needs to be told. Um, my name is Sam. I started identifying as transgender as a teenager, which would eventually lead me down the path of cross-sex hormones and irreversible surgeries. By the time I was 21 years old, I had completed my medical transition, which included having my penis and testicles amputated, a decision that I now deeply regret. I was formally diagnosed with gender dysphoria by two qualified psychologists, both of whom recommended sex reassignment as a solution to my gender dysphoria. During both of my assessments, few attempts were made at understanding the underlying etiology of my gender dysphoria or the underlying motivations that led me to identify as transgender. 
I was treated based on the affirmation model of care where therapists are discouraged and sometimes even prohibited from attempting to question or challenge the decisions and beliefs of their clients, which is, that's true here in New Hampshire because of the conversion therapy ban. A balanced approach to treatment for young people who exper experience gender dys dysphoria should include a differential, differential diagnosis and explorative therapy to address comorbid psychosocial conditions before escalating to drastic and irreversible measures like a gender transition. There is limited evidence that suggests that sex reassignment procedures produce desirable long-term outcomes and many young people who undergo this process will come to regret it. A notable study of adolescents with gender dysphoria concluded that most adolescents who experience gender dysphoria will grow out of it by the time they reach adulthood. I would eventually grow out of my gender dysphoria by the time I was 22 years old, but by that time my reproductive organs had already been amputated. A medical doctor who supports a decision of a patient to have their arms amputated would be met, met with disgrace and would have their fitness to practice questioned. Why is this not the case when the patient demands to have their reproductive organs removed? In retrospect, as I reflect on my journey, I now recognize that I was immature and lacked the wisdom necessary to understand the long-term implications of my decisions. I feel that I was misled to, to believe that I was born in the wrong body and that gender reassignment was a solution to my discomfort and subsequently subjected to a medical experiment that reminds me more of a modern day lobotomy than evidence-based healthcare. And for any parents here in Nashua who are dealing with this, um, the, book, the book Irreversible Damage by Abigail Schreer is available from the Nashua Library. Um, you know, you don't have to put your kids through this. Uh, there are other options. Thank you. Lori Ortolano. Lori Ortolano, 41 Berkeley Street. Um, you know, it's really nice to see a full list of people come up here and talk to you. And there's a lot of diversity here and there's a lot of really passionate issues here. And I'm really thrilled to see this kind of attendance and I'd love to see it at every meeting. I think it's great for the community. Um, I had a, uh, an opportunity, we're entering into budget season soon, and I had an opportunity to go to um, a, the Sunshine Week Forum last night at St. Anne's on First Amendment Rights and Open Records, which is done with a panelist of, of five uh, attorneys, uh, very um, prominent attorneys in media um, area, as well as Judge Delker from Superior Court North and uh, a reporter as a moderator. And it was very interesting, very well done. It was a full house event. Uh, it, was, it, it was well attended. And one of the speakers is um, Emily Rice, who's the uh, city solicitor for the city of Manchester. And she talked a lot about communication and dealing with records, how important open communication is in a city or in any municipality to address your records issues. And that the only effective way to describe and define records you're looking for is to be able to go to departments and have these communications. And she made it very clear, and I wrote down her exact words, that email is very awkward. To force citizens to only communicate through email is very awkward because it's very difficult to achieve <coughs> an understanding of the records. And in Nashua, we're forced to use only email. And I had a chance to speak to that panel about that. And, you know, I also addressed a real concern that I have with the location of our right to know administrator. We hired that position, I think, a little over a year ago. And our and all the other cities and towns I've called, their right to know people are assigned to their city clerk's office, which is an open office for the public. Our right to know administrator is under Tim Cummings behind a locked office door with no office hours and no phone call. And any letter received also does not have a phone call to reach him. I announced that at the committee last night and got quite a chuckle and a look to write a story. But I would like to see in this budget season you folks move the right to know administrator to Dan Healy's office at the city clerk. When I call the right to know administrator and I need a record, he meets me in the city clerk's office because I'm not allowed to be at the Tim Cummings office. 
How seconds. ridiculous is that? And our whole ability to get records out of this city has just been ridiculously restricted. So I would like you to consider making that position more of a public position there for the people and I'd encourage you to look at his workload and the responses that he has generated for 23 and early in 24. There's a real issue there and I'll address that at another meeting. Thank you very much. Matthew Guthrow. Matthew Guthrow, 104 Fawn Lane. Um, what a night we had tonight. I mean, we talked about everything from stop signs to budgets to, you know, how we're going to raise and increase our rate. We, we even had people come and ask you to help them broker world peace. I mean, we had an interesting night. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was to continue a conversation that you guys started in this chamber at your last um, alderman meeting. It was about uh, decorum that happened here. It was during your commission comments. Um, the last time I came in here and talked to you guys, um, I was talking about this resolution that you guys passed. And, you know, like I said, I'm not about not spending money with the schools, but I, I'm about spending it the right way. But at the end of the day, you know, I come up here and I talk to you guys and I, I try to come to you guys and, and talk to you in a, an appropriate manner. I'm respectful. I sit in the back. I, I don't act out of, turn, out of turn. I see you guys out in the community. I had a great conversation with, uh, with Alderman Moran. We were at the, with our kids out there. I told him, I, listen, I, I probably couldn't do your job. You guys dedicate so much time here. I probably couldn't do that job because I would have to take out time out of my job in order to sit here and attend all these meetings. But it, it really hurts when I hear my Ward 2 alderman dismiss the comments that I made when I came up here as if I'm some sort of political hack that said the only reason why I came up here to make these comments was because I was supporting that person's opponent in their election. You know, first of all, I never had that his opponent sign in my yard. I never contributed to his opponent's campaign. One I never stood out in front of my polling place with his opponent's sign. I actually stood across from him with another opponent's sign, and I had a great conversation with him the whole time. I think that those comments are very dismissive and unnecessary, and I think that the rules of decorum really need to be taken a look at here because you really shouldn't be dismissing the public when they come up here with really smart and, and good conversations about how we're spending taxpayer money and how we need to find better ways to account for things that you guys are budgeting for. And accountability is a big thing in my book. That's all I have to say. Thank you. The gentleman who asked to speak, if you give your name and address for the record, please, you'll have three minutes. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> Islam Sarabi, 53 Georgetown Drive, Nashua, New Hampshire. I'm here I'm, just to add to what my brother and sister in humanity have said. Um, I'm here for Palestine. I am a son of Palestinians. My, both my parents are Palestinians. My dad was two years old when the genocide um, of uh, the Palestinians took place in 1948. So I'm not gonna talk about <laughs> Palestine since 1948. I'm not gonna start from October 7. I know this is Nashua, New Hampshire. It's a welcoming city. I'm gonna talk about my own experience. I moved to the US in 2004. Um, I was in the North Shore area. I work in Boston, but I moved to Nashua in 2007. I love Nashua, I loved it. Many more families here can say the same thing about uh, Nashua, New Hampshire. It's a welcoming city. I truly believe if we um, draft, adopt a ceasefire resolution here to stop the genocide that our federal government that failed many, many times to stop it or even let the United Nations and the um, Security Council to stop it, we actually, except beside the USA, it's Israel and a couple other islands who always vote against ceasefire. So, 
I have seen in the news many, many more cities, like what Russia said, Newburgh, New York, uh, <coughs> they adopted ceasefire resolution. If all cities, many cities, most cities in the US, they do the same, hopefully that will create pressure on the US government, and hopefully we see them that they act upon it. Um, again, Nashua is a welcoming city. If that happens, it will send a strong message to all people that we promote peace, we reject genocide, we reject violence, we reject sending bombs to kill children. Children in, in Gaza, 13,000 plus already killed in five months. If you do that, the math, it's like 12 million One in the minute. US. Um, so I hope draft, adopt, um, ceasefire resolution, and I thank you for the time. Thank you. All right, we'll go to remarks by the members of the board. Who's running the meeting, her? We, we've been pretty good about allowing this, but we're going to cut it off right now. Public comment is over. Public comment is over. Thank you. No. Alderman Moran. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, and to the uh, speakers, just um, if you can, can you just come back, feel free, just get here early and sign up on the sheet before it gets taken away. Um, it's just the reason why I object is not objecting to the statements that are made, it's the objection of the process. Because we do have folks that come here, arrive early, sign up. Everyone deserves to be uh, heard but within that context of time. We do have an ordinance we have to follow. Um, and I don't particularly, I've just informed you as an alderman at large to see you in Nashua, and um, I hope to see you guys back at the next meeting uh, slightly earlier. Just fill out the form, have someone do it in advance, that happens as well. Uh, but we have an ordinance. If we don't have the opportunity to get to another speaker, then in every meeting we can't follow our ordinance. Um, so there were uh, comments that I won't dive into regarding um, affirmation therapy. Uh, I don't believe that to be a thing uh, in regards <coughs> to uh, people transitioning uh, as a therapist myself. Um, I do know that conversion therapy is banned, but that is separate from the concept of affirmation counseling. Um, and I won't go further down that plight uh, because that would be more of a role of a state legislator, uh, which I might reinvest myself in doing again. Um, other than that, yes, uh, a ceasefire would be fantastic. I think uh, Hamas should release the hostages and Israel should stop bombing. I think it's as simple as that. Uh, whether that needs to be done at the civil uh, as a, a resolution, I don't know if that's a role for the city government. Um, all, right. all right, that's it. I'm not going to get myself into any trouble. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alderman Lopez. Um, I would like to congratulate my brother um, on the birth of his daughter, Isabella Lucien Lopez. She was born 10 pounds, which I'm told is large. So <laughs> congratulations to Patricia as well for doing all the work, I guess. Um, <clears throat> I would like to also um, uh, make note uh, that this Sunday, um, we uh, Operation Enduring Welcome, which is now being called Nashua Veterans Promise, uh, will be uh, partnering with Joanne's Kitchen to do a, a St. Patrick's Day dinner uh, over at Delana's House for Veterans. Um, anybody who'd like to support that, stop by Joanne's Kitchen. Um, you can sponsor a meal for a veteran. Um, it's uh, corned beef and cabbage, all the trimmings. Um, definitely would appreciate your support. Um, finally, I'm going to be very quick. Um, to, I want to appreci express appreciation for all the people who came out to speak today um, on, uh, with regards to their beliefs about Pal Palestine. It takes a lot of courage to talk to, number one, identify yourself as uh, an immigrant to this country. Um, number two, to identify any kind of religious orientation. And then number three, to talk about um, politics. And they did all three. Um, so while I recognize that they may not have been fully familiar with our legislative practices or ordinances, um, I joined Alderman Moran in inviting them to speak at the next, um, just sign up in advance, make sure that we know uh, and have your information on there. Make it easy on our president, who's been kind of getting uh, razzed this meeting with people, just deciding how they're going to be in the meeting. So um, I appreciate uh, President Wilshire's stewardship 
um, and all public comment. Thank you. Alderman Sullivan. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, a little honey and vinegar tonight. First, the vinegar. Uh, tough night for the Nashua taxpayer, um, but it is what it is. Uh, the honey is uh, congratulations to the uh, Nashua North boys basketball team. They made it to the championship. Unfortunately, they were one win short up against a tougher component uh, opponent in Pinkerton, but uh, congratulations for just making it. Uh, it's a big achievement, so good for them. Thanks. Alderman Clemens. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I want to thank everybody who came out tonight to speak um, and talk at the second public comment period about their feelings on um, uh, Palestine and Israel. Um, I think that um, I agree with Alderman Moran that um, you know it's a it's a, it's a tricky situation, but I do believe that uh, a ceasefire should happen with uh, the release of the hostages as well. And um, hopefully uh, cooler heads will prevail and uh, that will happen. I'm not sure the place of that for our city government, but I do, those are my personal beliefs. Alderman Tebow. Thank you, Madam President. I'm gonna come in with just vinegar. Um, just kidding. Um, first thing, um, you know, I mentioned it two weeks ago when we had some of the same uh, uh, people come and speak to us. Uh, you know, I definitely support a ceasefire, and I don't know if it's the right thing here, but, you know, I want to see people stop dying. I don't care if it's Israelis or Palestinians. I want death to end. Uh, there's no reason to continue it. So I do support that 100%, um, and uh, for the people that are out there that keep you know, protesting and, and trying to get the right thing done. You know, I thank you for doing that. Um, and thank you for everybody that came out today. It was good to see just a bunch of the different people with all kinds of different issues um, to, to bring forth to us. I, like the speaker said, I would like to see more people come here too. I think it's important for citizens to come here and speak on issues that they care about. Um, you know, I will say that it, it'd be nice to have some people that just come up here and say, hey, you guys are doing a great job. So if you're out there, come on in. Um, and that could be any of us. It, it doesn't have to be all of us. Um, but, you know, on a couple other things here, uh, happy birthday to Alderman Clemens, who, who celebrated his 29th yesterday. <laughs> um, I wish. Anniversary of what? <laughs> uh, someone spoke about flags, so I'm going to speak about flags. Um, Mayor Donches can correct me if I'm wrong. Are we raising a flag tomorrow at 4 o'clock, French flag, Canadian flag? All right, I'll be there. 4 o'clock. Uh, the Francophone Francophony. group, I think, is Francophony. Francophony. Alderman Jetty knows. These are my people. Come on, Tebow. He's been around longer. So um, I'm going to be there for it because I, it's one of the few times my people are, get recognized. So I'm, I'm going to go. Um, and I hope maybe you can get out of court and uh, head over. <laughs> um, and then let's see. Uh, what do we write down here? Uh, recoding. So um, this is Vision Week. Um, and I think. It's important for the city, it's important for the Broad Street to Main Street connection of Amherst Street, where Broad and Amherst connect and go all the way down. It's also the Tree Street start in the next couple days as well. The visioning, the revisioning. Um, I went last night to the first one of the first meetings for uh, the Amherst Street corridor, um, and then I went today at, over at the Hunt Building uh, for that same thing, but with leaders of the community. My concern, and I wish, I hope all the, uh, Director Sullivan is listening. I don't know, I mean, I, they're marketing it really well, but there's not a lot of citizens going there. And uh, Alderman Gavea was there last night, he could see. Uh, Alderman Clee was at both meetings I was at, she could see. Good time. Um, it just wasn't a lot of people there. And the whole point of, you know, we hear a lot of, you guys decide for us all the time. We never get heard. These are the places where citizens can make an impact on their communities. What do you want to see in your communities? What is tough in your area, right? What could be uh, made better? Or what do you want to keep the same, right? Obviously, we want to keep home in there. That's a big draw. But what else do you want to see there? How do you want to see your roads? How do you want to see your sidewalks? I think it's in incredibly important. And I hope we see people come out. There's all kinds of activities ending on Saturday where there's uh, a bunch of open time and some, I think, a coffee <coughs> event. Friday night, there's a historic walk through uh, part of uh, some of that area, oh, it starts at the, over at the Hunt. Um, I encourage citizens to go, please go. Please invest in your city. Please tell them what you want. Please tell us what you want. It's so critical. 
um, to make this city as good as we want it to be, a welcoming city, a one where we see so many different walks of life come in here and speak. I think that's excellent. And finally, St. Patrick's Day, because I don't think we're going to see Alderman O'Brien or Alderman Sullivan or any of the other ones that may be Irish. But our leprechaun over there, Alderman O'Brien, happy St. Patrick's Day. I hope you have a good weekend. Thank you. Slatcha. Alderman Clee. Uh, thank you, um, Madam President. Um, I, 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 too, wanted to address the, the recoding. Um, while I think our, um, our planning department com community development has done a lot of work to get information out, I think it was a lot of information to get out. Um, and so the, the issue is not, not the fault on that, that um, um, citizens aren't coming. Um, I know I tried to get it out to my, to my email group as well. And I think all but one person with, that was a citizen, I think, that showed up for those, those particular um, meetings. But one of the things, and Alderman, um, <laughs> Alderman uh, to my left here, keeps saying to me, free food, free food. No, no, I know, but I was trying not to say your name. Free food, free food, free food. And yes, there has been free food all along. Um, and I did, when I sent it out to my constituents, I said, all events are free, and some events have refreshments. So yesterday's event had sandwiches and cookies and fruit and beverages um, of the non-alcoholic nature. But the, the key here is they do need to hear from citizens. They need to hear about the, um, that Amherst Street quarter from um, Main Street to um, Broad Street. And it's not just um, to hear that you know we don't like the traffic, which is one of the things that I kept haranguing about on and on again. But it's what would you like to see? I, I, a gentleman today asked the question, how would you like to see that area in 15 years? And what do you want to keep from that area in 15 years? So um, it, it was quite interesting. I mean, I found myself saying, I want to see it as a community neighborhood, but I want to see a very safe, um, walkable community where the sidewalks are a little bit wider, a bicycle can go through without taking um, their life in their hands. Um, we have businesses on there. We have reliable, we have a hair salon with massage. We have little uh, community um, um, uh, variety store. We have lawyers, we have um, dental uh, offices there. Of course, we have Holman, we have the school, and we have Cumberland Farms. So there's a lot of things, but there's also a lot of residents both owning and mentors. So I would love to see people come out. Um, and even if you don't live in that area, you drive through that area. You, you are affected by that area. Um, so you know, let's, let's talk about it. There are things that can be done and so on. And the reason why they're focusing on this and the tree streets was because when the master plan came out, these two areas kind of got, they fell off. Uh, for some reason, not enough people came out to t discuss these areas, and they're extremely important. So for those in the Tree Street, the kickoff of the Tree Street is uh, March 14th, 5.30 to 7.30. Um, I believe it's in the auditorium. I think I have the wrong thing written here. Um, but it, it, it is on the, um, the website. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. If you just Google Vision, Work, uh, Vision Week, it, it will come up and so on. But it's um, 5.30 to 7.30. And I think it's important for, for people to, to get there and so on. Um, the Sunday is full of, Saturday is full of fun activities. Um, there's an all ages city scavenger hunt where they're gonna put eight to nine things so that we can learn more about that area in our city. Because I think we, one of the things that they talked about was we, we drive by and we don't notice, which means people have to put up bigger signs because we're driving way too fast and we don't see it. So we don't see that little convenience store sign and we don't see some of the other ones. So people hate big signs, slow down so we can see what's going on there. And slowing down does not mean that we have less capacity. It does not mean necessarily that the traffic will back up. How they design the road so people, I, I think um, um, Director Bagley said that she was driving down Amherst Street, apparently she wasn't going fast enough and someone scooted around her. Can you imagine that on Amherst Street? Someone trying to scoot around, that particular area trying to scoot around her. Um, it's very dangerous, and there are children that are going to school, walking to school, and one uh, very lovely person who was there in a wheelchair said that she lived um, on Amherst Street and could not walk her children to school because she was in a wheelchair and she couldn't have her children beside her because the sidewalks weren't wide enough. So we do have to look at potential changes, and it's not going to happen overnight. 
obviously it's what the budget will bear and so on, but we have to have this safe conversation. So I'll get off that uh, high horse um, at the moment. But just so that everybody knows, they have open house every single day at the Hunt Memorial from, um, I think it's, uh, um, I think it's from morning, like 9 a.m. to, um, I think it's 3.30 uh, p.m. that you can have this uh, open house and you, can, and you can go there and you can ask questions and they will show you all the maps and they've got these lovely um, kind of pictures of what other communities have done, including ours. Um, uh, Atwood Drive is on there. Do you, do you like this kind of design? Do you not? So they can get a feel as to what we want. It doesn't mean what we will do. It's what the community wants from everything from developers. And let's not give the developers all the voices. Let's hear from the people. Okay, again, I'm sorry, I will get off that. Um, but the, um, I wanna make a comment that, and I apologize for not having addressed it. Um, for those who want to know, Manchester, per their charter, is giving $4,000, and they voted in many, many years ago an additional $1,000, so they're giving $5,000 to their, to their aldermen. Um, the city of Lowell is giving $25,000 um, to their, um, and um, beyond that, within New Hampshire, Manchester and Nashville are the, the highest. Without giving any person's name, because I don't want you know the pitchforks being at their door, I have spoken to other communities who are now <coughs> waiting for Nashville to have done this and will be doing uh, probably similar type of things. And for those that ask us to ceasefire and so on, I would love a ceasefire all around. Um, and it's horrible that any one person, let alone as many people, have died. Uh, but the bottom line is things have to be done in a particular way. I want every bullet to stop. I want every death to stop. And I want to feed these children. And I want to take care of them. But for us just to say, stop it. It's got to stop on both sides. We can't just call for one side to stop. All sides have to stop. I'm not sure that we can necessarily do that here. I think everybody would speak that we do not want this war. So I'm sorry. Uh, thank you very much. Alderman Kelly. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of things here. Uh, I wanted to remark on the van that we put through um, as a electric van. Obviously, that is something that the Energy Environment Committee and the mayor have been working on, uh, making sure that we are moving forward. The comment was made that you know it's it's too expensive, but uh, I would I would counter that that sh is a short term view that we're really trying to work on to make sure that there's long long term stewardship. Um, for Nashua. So I wanted to comment on that. Um, I also wanted to thank everyone who came um, and spoke. I remember being in this chamber and being terrified to stand and up at that mic so I know what that feels like and uh, we do hear you and we really do appreciate this, the participation in um, all of the work that we do here at the city. So uh, thank you for that and then I'll tack on to that. Come and participate uh, for the code stuff. It's really important. Um, and it is something that's going to shape how we um, structure our city. So um, if you have the ability to come out and, and raise your voice in that, please do. And I will end with, um, I had the lovely opportunity right before this meeting to go to the Music in Our Schools concert um, over at Nashua South. Um, it was really great to see they had all of the um, uh, fairgrounds, middle school choirs, and the high schools, so you could see the progression through. Um, and it was just a lovely little bit of music before I got to come here. So, thanks, John. Okay. So, uh, Alderman O'Brien, do I have a motion? Uh, did you do a committee oh, announcement? announcements? I'm sorry, committee announcements. Alderman O'Brien. Yeah, tomorrow night, 7 p.m., in the automatic chamber. <coughs> Excuse me, chamber, uh, committee of infrastructure. No? Did I get my dates wrong? No, it's tomorrow. Next. All Roman Timmons. Oh, thank you, Madam President. Tomorrow um, is the Board of Health um, monthly meeting here at City Hall Auditorium. Any other committee announcements? Oh, Alderman right. Lopez. Uh, I think Alderman O'Brien was another cycle of that. But um, the Human Affairs Committee is here on Monday at 7. Hey. CDBG, come on in, learn about the organizations. Anyone else? Alderman Clay. 
Uh, thank you, Madam President. And I, I think what Alderman um, O'Brien meant to say was the joint infrastructure with PD will be uh, tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Um, I also want to mention that um, on Thursday, there is a 7 p.m. <coughs> Penichuk Water Special Meeting. Um, if you are on that committee, please attend. If you can't, please let me know. Um, the Penichuk um, brass, so to speak, um, come out for this, and I would hate for us to have to say we don't have quorum. So if for some reason you can't make it, um, I would look to Alderman uh, Wilshire for an at-large that could possibly fill in for you. So it's important that you let me know now. Thank you. Alderman Dowd. Yeah, on the <clears throat> Monday the 25th, we have several public hearings on several pieces of legislation followed by the budget meeting. So we'll need a quorum of the full board here for all of those and then followed by the budget. I, I, how many, Donna, there's seven, seven sure. public hearings, so. Yeah, I would like to uh, amend my announcement. <laughs> and yes, there is a meeting. However, the subject matter has changed. It's gonna be with the uh, police commission and several members of the uh, infrastructure committee. So my apologies. Uh, will it be here or will it be at Riverside Drive? No, if, as far as I know, it's here. Yeah. Yeah, it's here. At 6 o'clock. Alderman O'Brien? Non yes. public? Do I have a motion? For non public? Yes. My motion would be, Madam President, that the Board of Aldermen go into a non public session by roll call pursuing to RSA 91 A semicolon 3, Roman uh, numeral number 2. Parenthesis L, consideration of legal advice provided by legal counsel, either in writing or orally, to one or more present members of the public body, even where the local counsel is not present. Second. Okay. Take a roll call, please. Uh, Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderwoman Timmons. Yes. Alder Alderman Moran. Yes. Alderman Thibodeau. Yes. Alderman Govea. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Sullivan. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Sennett. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Tebow. Yeah. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Wilshire? Yes. 15 yeas, zero nays. And that motion carries. We will be going into non-public sessions, so everyone's going to need to leave, please. We did. <laughs>